All right, let's go through some of the entertainment stories that we have this morning. Oprah Winfrey is leaving the board of Weight Watchers. I kind of saw this coming. Yes, and uh, it's a blow to the company that's struggling to compete against the popularity of weight loss drugs. (laughs) Oh. <laughs> She's now buying Ozempic. Uh, Oprah, who has been on the firm's board since 2015, said she would not stand for re-election at its next shareholder meeting in May. Uh, she recently revealed that she used a weight loss drug to uh, as a maintenance tool. And uh, shares in Weight Watchers uh, International fell by 27%. Yeah, so do oh, you wow. consider it maintenance when it's the full thing that you use to lose well, the weight? That, <clears throat> but that's what it's supposed to be for. Right, right. Is, is, you're not supposed... You're Like, these people can take it for the rest of their lives. That's what they're saying, is that it's going to help you maintain your weight. Okay. But you're saying the initial, like, whatever pounds That was dropped. the thing. She, she, if she had have said, uh, she waited a little while. She sat on it. No, uh, oh, but I mean, listen, it, it's used to great effect. And the end result is the reason why it, it helps... You know, with weight control, people with diabetes, and then in general. So she looks great. Uh, she said in a statement that she would continue to work with Weight Watchers in it, elevating the conversation around re- or recognizing obesity as a chronic condition, which I do believe for some people it absolutely, absolutely is, and that's why that those these drugs, if they if uh, over long term use, if they continue to be safe, then then they should definitely be used. Well, and she's a <clears throat> sorry, she's a perfect example. I mean, I <clears throat> I was always a fan of hers. I loved her show. I think she's a great interviewer. And you would see her weight fluctuate. Yeah. I mean, over the years, you, you would just watch it. And yeah. so she's, I mean, she should probably uh, endorse Ozempic because yeah. she is who they are targeting. And sometimes, you know, I mean, this is obviously a case where this is a secondary function of it that has now eclipsed the original purpose. It's like heroin. You will lose weight on heroin. A lot of people don't realize that. And you lose your teeth you lose your and teeth. your hair. Yeah. And, your and you lose a lot. Life. Friends, yeah. your family. Your grasp on life. Yeah, there's a lot. But, <laughs> I mean, if you want to talk about a comprehensive loss system. But right. Nothing's better yeah. than heroin. Yeah, Kathy, yeah, yeah. friends, family, yeah. all of that. Right, right, yeah. 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 Uh, Your she, reticence to give handies to strangers in alleyways, yes. Uh, she also said that she will donate all her shares in the firm to the National Museum of African American History and Culture. She is one of the biggest shareholders in Weight Watcher with a stake of around 10%. Yeah, to, I thought she'd actually had a controlling share in the company, but I guess it was not the, tr- the case. Uh, her decision to leave the board comes as the company contends with a major shift in the weight loss industry after the launch of... Of anti-obesity drugs like uh, Wigovi and Ozempic. Uh, also on Tuesday, Weight Watchers published its latest financial figures, which showed a net loss of 81.88.1 million dollars for the last three months of 2023. So you know what's happening because of this, because of the popularity of these kind of drugs, besides Ozempic and the other ones, is um, like fast, fa- well, fast food and snack foods have had to rethink their marketing. Yeah, because a lot of people. Are, are kind of getting into the weight control thing and are being, they realize the future is here with this stuff and they got to rethink how they market their products. Yeah, I, well, I mean, listen, when it comes to fast food, it's not like, uh, um, you know, McDonald's is going to, well, here's the garden burger because it's yeah. not necessarily about um, the health of the food that these people are eating. It's, it's the amount. It's so, the amount. So, yeah, yeah. so maybe these value meals, because the value meal, like the smallest you can get is like a medium. You know what I mean? When you're ordering just a regular value meal, it would be better if you... You know, you get a smaller version. Yeah. Portion, yeah. yeah. Uh, so moving on to this story, The Bachelor's uh, Joey Grezidi, I, I'm not sure how you say his name. He's from our area. Uh, recently revealed that the cause of his yellow eyes on social media. <laughs> He's got yellow eyes? He does. I swear to God, he had yellow eyes. Yes. <laughs> so help me God. <laughs> so help me God, he had yellow eyes. <laughs> Uh, in an Instagram post, he addressed concerns from fans about the yellow tinge and the whites of his eyes, saying that they were caused by a condition that is called Gilbert's Syndrome. What, is he going to cry now? He's going to cry? <laughs> come on, cry, baby. baby come on, cry. Uh, so he said, so to give some context on that, I have to go all the way back uh, to when I was in high school. I was sick for about a week and a half. My mom thought that it would be a good idea to go to the doctor, and after having his blood work done, the results showed that his blood contained a high amount of bilirubin, which is a yellow substance produced when our bodies break down old red blood cells. You've, we've talked about this we before, have. bilirubin. Yeah, yeah. Bi- yeah. Bil- bilirubin is uh, ordinarily found in bile, uh, the fluid that enables your liver to help digest food. Too much bilirubin uh, indicates that the liver is not functioning properly. I swear... I went to high school with a kid named Billy Rubin. I'm he pretty sure. He jumped off the Tallahatchie Bridge, didn't he? No, that was Billy Joe McAllister. Okay. Um, but that means that there could be something that was wrong with my liver, he said. They found out that there 
was nothing that was necessarily wrong like hepatitis, but they diagnosed me with Gilbert syndrome. And he said, at the end of the day, I'm told that I am healthy. It's something that does affect the whites of my eyes. It makes it have those jaundice levels, which is why they look a little bit more yellow. It's something I want to pay attention to. But apparently it's relatively common. It is. It's fairly harmless as well. It does. Mystique has yellow eyes, right? Mystique? Yeah, in the... Oh, yes. Yeah. In, uh, in uh, X-Men, yeah. yes. Uh, She's so real, right? Maybe she has Billy Rubin. I don't know. But uh, nonetheless, that's the cause of the, um, of the eye it thing. It can happen with babies a lot. And, and you can see sort of the yellowing with them because of the Billy Rubin. But eventually it passes and it's not really that threatening. Do you know what's good for lunch? A Rubin sandwich. Rubens are oh, fantastic. God. Rye bread? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Rye bread. Rye bread. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drea DiMatteo is opening up about her new chapter. And this is interesting. After the Sopranos alum reached a slump in her acting career, as she recently shared, she found herself in a tight spot financially and said... She said, OnlyFans saved my life 100%. She said, I can't believe I'm saying that, but it really did save us. Anybody that wants to condemn me and put me down, go for it. I just hope you never find yourself in a position I was in to take care of two little kids. She said she was down to like 10 bucks. Yeah, so she shares uh, her children, uh, Alabama Gypsy Rose and Waylon Albert with her ex. And Shoot Billy Rubin. Shooter Jennings. And said that she only had $10 in her bank account when she signed up for OnlyFans. Uh, now she's married to a guy named Robbie Stabler. And uh, she her financial troubles came from her home expenses as well as caring for a parent with dementia. And it didn't take long for her to settle her debts through her adult content. Now keep in mind, she's an Emmy winner. She's an Emmy winner. So yeah. she, she apparently took care of her more. And like in short order, paid off everything. That's how quickly the money well, came. She said, she said, I was like, holy S, in five minutes. I was able to pay back Compass Real Estate, who kept the sale of my house. That's how quickly people it's started paying. It's Kathy, you've got to do the flip side. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. Just do anonymous. I know. I mean, stop and think about that. Within five minutes. And she, uh, she explained that even though she's no longer in financial straits, she plans to continue using the platform. She said, for the most part, uh, I look good. And the best part about it is I get to be heavier. And it's kind of interesting for what she says about creating some tips on uh, creating adult content. She said, I get to bulk up to look better. Jeez. I'm just being an Italian lady in the world eating spaghetti and pasta and steak. She said, you want your boobs to be big and you want your butt to be big. That's what I always say. Otherwise, the photos are a snooze fest. And she's making money on that. Do do we, I mean, we, we know people with OnlyFans. Oh, yeah. who, who do you think of the group that we know is finding it the most lucrative? Sarah Clayton. Sarah, well, Sarah Clayton, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, but that's like... Tr like that's what you would traditionally think it would be pornography like, yeah right. like yeah. this is pretty, yeah yes yeah. right i'm trying to be subtle <laughs> now i don't know about drea i haven't i haven't seen sexy pictures, pictures. but but she's uh, i i assume she's doing nudity yeah well yeah. it seems what i've seen and it's only what they're going to show on like you know tmz or whatever but it's yeah. like lingerie stuff and there's some mild fisting so oh, yeah really mild nice. I got to I think I'm going to I'm going to do stuff? Feet. yeah. All right. Yeah, I oh, you, I really got to What is your only fans name going to be just so that people know when it pops up on when there? I don't know. Can you help me come up with something? Yeah. Please? Yeah. All right. Uh, how about Kathy L Romano? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll really no throw him off with the know. L. <laughs> All right. But the L looks like a leg with a foot. Uh, more <laughs> presenters continue to be announced for the Academy Awards, including Bad Bunny, Chris Hemsworth, Dwayne Johnson, Michael Keaton, Regina King, Jennifer Lawrence, Kate McKinnon, Rita Moreno, John Mulaney, Catherine O'Hara, Octavia Spencer, and Rami Youssef. That's some big names. Yeah. Do you think so, I mean, they always have. Hey, King, at this point, remembers us, would remember us? Probably not. If she came in, she would. Yeah. Like, it, we could jar her memory. Yep. Slap um, her around. <laughs> I wasn't thinking that. <laughs> They will join the previously announced uh, Mahershala Ali, uh, Nicolas Cage, Jamie Lee Curtis, Brendan Fraser, Jesse Lang, Matthew McConaughey, a whole bunch of them. Al Pacino. And he and Jimmy, Jimmy. are going to be uh, presenting. Come, come sit at our table, Jimmy. Together. He, he calls him over from across the room. <laughs> Jimmy. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, Kihi Kwan, uh, Sam Rockwell. Kihi Kwan. Uh, Sam Rockwell. Uh, so the Shut Oscar. Around. Uh, the Oscars are coming up on the 10th, Sunday the 10th, by the way. Well, it's, yeah, this, right? yeah, it's not this weekend, right? ABC. Next weekend. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see. Jimmy. It, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> It's, My, it's the uh, mouse pad. Uh, no, 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 no. That wasn't the mouse pad. The, the, the lights in the in the uh, room here. Do I was on the De, De Niro page thinking it was the Pacino page, and I couldn't find the Jimmy clip. Do you want my sunglasses? No, I'm good. Right. 
Uh, let's see. Rockefeller Plaza, New York, uh, Plaza in New York City, which is famously home to NBC, will rename will be renamed Olivia Benson Plaza. What? For two days this month to celebrate the 25th season of Law and Order Special Victims Unit. 25 seasons. Uh, Mariska Hargaday, who stars as detective Olivia Benson on the series, will also be the subject of an immersive exhibit about the world of SVU. Uh, the free celebration set for March 14th, 15th will also feature a Benson & Company coffee truck with custom-made uh, latte art. And a show theme trivia game. Is uh, is her is she a latte drinker on the show? Is that I don't know. Is, does she Man, the actress? One episode of SVU. I, re- uh, I, I watched Law and Order, the original, the OG, for a stretch, but I never watched SVU. I told uh, you one time I was actually doing uh, decorating uh, for the Christmas, and uh, it rolled into that, and it, by my reckoning, appeared to be one eight-hour episode. <laughs> wow. That. <laughs> It, it started with the first episode at 10 and ended the way the first episode was supposed to end at like 6 o'clock at night. Wow. All right, so they're going to do that special uh, tribute to her uh, coming up in the near future. Will Forte, our friend, Nick's friend, <laughs> uh, posted an open letter to the cast and crew of Coyote vs. Acme, the finished Looney Tunes live-action slash animation hybrid film that Warner Brothers decided to shelve for a tax break. He said, I was thinking what everyone else must have been thinking. This must be a hunk of junk, he wrote. But then I saw it, and he said, it's incredible. So so are they still shelving it for the tax money? I don't know. I only got a little blurb about this this morning, so I didn't get a chance to look up any more details about it. It's supposed to be like a loving Roger Rabbit-ish kind of... Yeah. Uh, and I love the Roadrunner oh, stuff. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. But you know why this works today? It's because they don't talk. Right, so you don't have people doing an impression of of Mel Blanc, right? Doing Bugs Bunny or, right. or whatever. Right. What you need is a meep meep. You know, it was always one of my favorite moments is when there was like a giant boulder <laughs> that would be falling from the sky. Right. It's inevitable. It's going to hit the coyote, <laughs> and he would bring up just a tiny little umbrella. <laughs> Hey, Steve, would they it's live score those episodes? What's that? Would they, would they live score them? Was that a, like a live orchestra Call, to the... Uh, yes, those guys? Yeah. yeah yes, they, they would. Yeah, the way they would score a, um, a, a movie. So yeah, they would yeah. have a full orchestra, a full orchestra yeah, for yeah. the episodes and record it that so way. So all of that stuff, you know, uh, and those writers that came over, and that was mostly visual, as you rightly pointed out, but Bugs yeah. Bunny and all those guys had written for the Marx Brothers, had written for W.C. Fields, had written for all these guys. So that's why they're so freaking good. Yeah. Uh, Marissa just sent me a note that says no one will ever see it. He apparently put that in his post. So oh. so it will never. It was one of those well, like the uh, like the, the back girl, the back girl movie. Right? Never Nin- seen. ninety million dollar movie somewhere. These movies that are made and scrapped, that they're kept somewhere. They have to be somewhere. They don't just burn them up. Right. Well, I mean, you know, one that's legendary is that Fantastic Four movie that Roger Corman made that was never released. No, I didn't and know that. And now you can actually find it really on, on YouTube. Yeah. And. To be honest, it should never have been released. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I'd like to see these things, still. Yep. Uh, this is messed up. Former WWE star Billy Jack Haynes has been charged with murder of his wife, Jeanette Beecraft. Uh, he refused to surrender to authorities for several hours before finally giving himself up. Uh, neighbors said that uh, Beecraft was suffering from dementia. Oh, man. So I don't know what the details are on that, and I don't know if it was like a, you know, I don't know if it was like a mercy killing or something. I have oh, no Jesus. idea. I haven't yeah. seen any of the details. I just saw the headline of this. Uh, and then um, we're going to wrap kind of early on this case. So uh, I'm going uh, to do a couple more quick stories, and then we'll move into the clips. Uh, Reacher star, Alan Richin, which, by the way, Casey and, and Steve have been watching Reacher, and I heard them talking about and Rochelle and I started watching it about a week or two ago. We zipped right through the first season. It's great, isn't We're it? We're on to the second season. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, I love it. Uh, it's, it's a great detective-type series. Uh, it's got that, but it's also... It's very, very funny, and there's some, there's tons of action in yeah, it, Yeah, and, so. and he himself is a mountain. He's massive. Yeah. Well, he revealed in an interview with Men's Health that he lost out on the role of Marvel's Thor. Yeah. He said, I didn't take it seriously about the audition. Right. He said, I was like, ah, they'll throw me the part if I look like the guy. And he says he had thought, nah, nobody really cares about acting. And so he didn't he didn't put enough effort into it. He could have been Thor. Do you know what role they are, the, the big buzz is? for him he they're saying could be the new batman 
because he's, you know, he is, he's big, he's imposing, and they're keying off the Reacher thing. Another new Batman? Yeah. I, I think he's too big for Batman. Well, I mean, some, some versions of Batman have been very big, like, like um, I know, but the but, Frank Miller version. But to be Bruce Wayne, yeah. and, you know, Bruce Wayne is more of just a, he's a playboy businessman. Wouldn't he stand out if he was just this absolute humunculous, gigantic individual yeah. and... You know, people would put it together too yeah. quickly. I know it's a movie. I kind of yeah. like him though. I, I I think I like him a lot. I want a I want a I want a big beefy Batman to just hold me down and <laughs> yeah. You know, press call you a little bit. my ass with an ostrich feather, and uh, and then I have to call him daddy. Well, they're always looking for new storylines. So but no, just as long as it there is an origin story involved, because I don't think anybody really knows Why how I like Batman became my ass. Batman. Yeah. Just yeah. yeah, right. You take you take it from the beginning. Yeah. 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 All right, um, I think we're going to do the clips now, if you don't mind. Okay, not movies? Oh, I, yeah, did you send over movies? I did. Well, uh, uh, da, da, da. Would you like me to do it? Hang on. And I, I, it's a special one for you, Preston. You yeah. know why. Oh, because, well, hang on a second. I, I don't have access to my regular email. i got to go through a different portal. Would you, like me, would you like Casey to walk my computer over so he can read it? Yes. Here, let me. I have to sign in Would you like to tickle number? my ass with an oxygen? Yeah, bring it over. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm one second. Or do you want to read it? No, you should do it. Okay. Okay, one second. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Here we go. All right. Kathy, would you do the honors? And then would you tickle my ass with an ostrich <laughs> With an ostrich feather? Go. Thank you, Kathy's Our bringing guest it. Guest is sitting here in a chair. I know. Sorry about this, Al. <laughs> Hang on a second. Did he just say tickle my ass with an ostrich? Bag? All right, opening <laughs> this weekend today, actually Dune Part Two, amazing movie. Saw it yesterday. Sci-fi adventure starring Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Austin Butler, and many others. Uh, Dune Part Two will explore the mythic journey of Paul Atreides as he unites with Chani and the Fremen while on a war path of revenge against the conspirators who destroyed his family, facing a choice between the love of his life and the fate of the own universe he endeavors to prevent a terrible future only he can foresee two hours and 46 minutes long it's pg-13 wide theater release rotten tomato score gives it a 95 percent and you concur correct it is it's one of the best science fiction movies i've ever seen and i'm I'm a fan of the story, and yes, I'm a fan of yeah. all the versions of it, but this one is, man, did they get it right. You guys are going to love it. Also opening this weekend is Spaceman. Spaceman. Sci-fi drama, and it stars Adam Sandler uh, and uh, Carrie Mulligan and Kunal Nayar. <laughs> <laughs> so nice, we had to play Yo, it twice. Listen, I'm not, I'm not playing, I'm not playing sound effects at all. I'll hit a lot morning. over I, here. I, I'm not doing it anymore, Preston. <laughs> so if you're like, dude, you should play that. I'm just not no, going to. No, okay. so it's don't get mad not, at me anymore. Yeah, get off his back. Give him the man a break here. <laughs> Wait, as soon as you shut the computer, it stopped. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Six months into a solitary research mission to the edge of the solar system, an astronaut <laughs> Jacob realizes this is how hard I touched the mouse pad, Preston. <laughs> He's he just strokes, he stroked you know, my hand. You know, there is a way to adjust its sensitivity, and I'll take care of it for All you. All right, so he realizes that the marriage that he left behind might not be waiting for him when he returns to Earth. Despite to fix things, with, uh, desperate to fix things with his wife, uh, Lenka, he is helped by a mysterious creature from the beginning of time that he finds hiding in the bowels of the ship. Uh, Hanus works with Jacob to make sense of what went wrong before it's too late. It's an hour and 48 minutes long. Rated R, limited theater release, streaming on Netflix, Rotten Tomatoes score 57%. So it could be good. Yeah. Depends, you know, yeah. let's see. All right, now we can do the clips. Can we have that sound effect? Yes. Okay. Wow. wow. Jesus. <laughs> can we wow. have it? <laughs> can you take this? All right, here. Can you take this? Throw it. <laughs> the completely made up adventures of Dick Turpin. God, that's loud. Is a fictional take <laughs> on the life of I'm, high, I'm scared. We're a mess. Of a highway robber in the 18th century. In this clip, Hugh Bonneville talks about playing Dick's enemy, corrupt lawman Jonathan Wilde. Jason hit it. His main ambition in life is to be a Bond villain and scare the living daylights out of everyone. But unfortunately, the person he's meant to be scaring just doesn't really notice. And uh, at the other, on the other hand, he's also being completely undermined by his 12-year-old son slurping drinks in the background. So uh, his ambitions of ruling the underworld um, by being frightening um, are sort of scuppered at every turn, and that's obviously a great comedic vein to tap. Tiger uppercut. <laughs> uh, the completely made-up adventures of Dick Turpin premieres today on Apple TV+. And then one more clip. <laughs> hit it. <laughs> okay. Here. Go ahead, hit it. Holy hell. All right. 
In an unprecedented maneuver, a full season of Megamind Rules and the film Megamind versus the Doom Syndicate both debut today. In this clip, director Eric Vogel talks about working on the project simultaneously. All right, hit it, Jason. It was all kind of constructed within a TV animation pipeline. But that said, I knew that, you know, we needed to make this thing cinematic and feel sort of epic. It requires a, it's, a, it's, it's, you know, you have to be good at puzzles. Shut the f up, huh? Megamind rules and uh, Megamind versus the Doom Syndicate uh, debuted today on Peacock. And there you go. <laughs> we made it through our entertainment report. All right, before we take a break, there's somebody here we would like to chat with. Uh, she works locally and worked for uh, television station WNEP, who has uh, partnered with us last year as well. And yes. Gave us some coverage of the Cardboard Classic here in Scranton. But she's a Philly gal. Hey. Went to Temple University. And we would like to welcome Allie Gallo. Hey. Meteorologist this morning. Hi, Allie. How you doing? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Wonderful. Nice to see you. All right. I said you're the Philly area, but New Jersey actually is where you grew up. Yes. Washington Township. Went to Washington Township High School, but then went to Temple. Okay. And you uh, have been working here for about eight years or Going on like eight that? years now, yeah. All right. And they have, uh, uh, she and her husband have a new baby girl. Yeah, you guys were oohing and eyeing over the picture. A nine-month-old. Nine-month-old baby girl, Molly. Oh, wow. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we're happy that you're, you're coming out and uh, giving some coverage locally to this uh, event and um uh you know there, it, it's kind of an interesting thing going on and nick you sort of helped massage this yeah. along with Preston. people who are sort of not quite familiar with our show are for, now familiar with this event and are are coming into the area are you getting a response like that oh absolutely and i mean scrant we're only what two yeah. hours from philly so maybe not familiar with the show but have heard of it right okay my uh, my in-laws watch wnep all the time and they, they love it and they love you uh ali so Thank it's really you. cool that you're here but you guys have a sled again this year so are you planning on going down on the sled or is it your crew that's going our down? crew is going <laughs> down i didn't real i had already agreed to something for read across america week at, at an elementary school in the area so i probably won't make it back in time oh, that's, yeah, use the elementary school kids as the cop out. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm doing something with Make a Wish, and I'm not. <laughs> uh, and so, so you're a meteorologist. Yes. Uh, what uh, what weather wise is going to be happening today? Are we, we going to be good? I mean, today is perfect. They were able to make snow all night. Temperatures are in the teens right now, but perfect. today sunshine all day. Upper 40s. I mean, a perfect day. Perfect <laughs> March day. Yeah. So in this area, you must spend a lot of time. Obviously, you're talking about conditions, right? All, so it's, we, it might be a little bit where we are, but it's a lot where you are here. Yes, yeah. And we actually, so what's unique about WNEP is we do the weather entirely outside. Unless there's lightning within five miles of the... Really? Area, we do the weather in our, we call it our backyard. You so, should, we're in the hotel right next to you. So you, 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 you can guys, see come on our set. Here. You can <laughs> see our set from the hotel. Oh, yeah. by the way, I circled 81 twice yesterday trying to find... The hotel, that that little like thing, that, that I, interchange. At one, and at one, I listen. I, I'm going to tell you the story. I'm going to tell you the truth. I I went to do it again, <laughs> third time. I made the wrong turn again. I was like, no. And I, you end up on the highway. I was like, I'm not doing this. Dude. I reversed. Yep. Back yep. into like. There was traffic. There was turning lanes. There was going cross traffic. It was a mess. What, what and did I, I tell you to look for? W N E. Well, so that's what I did. So then I saw your sign. And I was like, there it is. And that signage has gotten bigger and bigger over the years. The, the station is this way. The hotels are that way. And, Ali, uh, just talk a little bit about how awesome uh, Mountain Fest is because Montage has been so supportive of us for last year and this year, and it really continues to grow. And I think, Steve, that's part of the reason why so many people yes. from the Scranton area are, are coming to Cardboard Classic now. Well, and it really just celebrates everything winter has to offer, and that's what's so unique about this area, northeastern Pennsylvania. I mean, it's just amazing the amount of people. I think they're expecting like 15,000 people here. This Over the weekend, weekend. Yeah. I, yeah. I understand, like, ticket sales and everything are way up through the roof, so. Yeah, over 100, I think, cardboard sleds are set yep. up. And they've, they've been lining up all morning long. It's just incredible. It's what makes this area so great, so unique. You know, people complain about the cold, but it's temperatures in the teens, and they're making snow and a sunny day. It's perfect. At the time we're doing it, we're going to start around 10. That's our goal is to get out there and start doing it. What will the temperature be outside? At what time? What, at 10 o'clock. Around 10. Ooh. Still kind of cold. I would uh, say low 30s. All right. Yeah. Can you do something about that? No, we want to call. We want to call. Perfect. Yeah. That's what we want. Yeah. 
Excellent. All right. Well, thank you for uh, giving some coverage to this. We appreciate it. Thanks for and having me. We're excited for the day. And good luck with the, I know you're not going down on the sled, but good luck to any P sled. Good luck with the elementary school kids. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, Ali Gallo, thank Yay. you from WNEP here in Scranton. All right. We will take a break. We're going to meet some of the sled peeps uh, yes. and see how they're faring for today. Some of the bigger ones. And uh, we, we may have Ed Rowland of Collective Soul on the show this morning. We're working on that. It's That'd be great. That he'll be stopping in today as they're performing for Mountain Fest tonight. We'll take a break and we'll be back with more of the Cardboard Classic at Montage Mountain on MMR. Stay with us. <laughs> and that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Alrighty, uh, you know, one of the things that, that we have never really been able to do in the past uh, when setting up for Cardboard Classic because of our previous location where our broadcast section was placed was way away from where the hill was and all of the participants were over that way getting themselves set. Yeah. Uh, but here with the setup at Montage, we are literally right at the base of where the entire Cardboard Classic run ends. I mean, they will go almost underneath us. Yeah, no, it, it is, it's... From the deck. Could not be more perfect. So we get a chance to talk to uh, some of our longtime uh, contributors, builders, participants, and uh, before the event takes place. Yes. Which is awesome. It. And our friend, Steve Wilson, is yeah. here this morning from Wilson's Secret Sauce. We It almost seems like we saw you yesterday, Steve. <laughs> and the day before, too. And the day oh. before, as well. You're always... I did Joe Bell for a paycheck. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's good to see you. You are a vision in red my friend tell us about this suit you're wearing oh steve castle from akabuchi's would not let me come out hip they're a tuxedo rental place and we uh, i yeah. love those guys they're phenomenal but you this know. one is really sort of pimpish well we're doing a red solo cup theme this year ah. all right so you got a full red suit and he's wearing a big fluffy hat <laughs> mummers sunglasses it's a mummers hat mummers 2001 nice and uh, a phillies jersey underneath there as yep. well got to represent the home team of course so you're going with a red solo cup theme this year yeah it's 33 feet long oh my <laughs> 33 is it in fact a solo cup now there's uh, six on each side. Okay, wow. Yeah. All right, what gave you the idea for the for the theme? Because you know it's got to start with some weird little yeah. kernel of uh, inspiration. And what made you think of uh, of Solo Cup? It's it's usually something show related, but with Jimmy Buffett and Toby and yeah. Know. The passing of Toby, it just you know that's what that's where the idea yeah. came from. Yeah, we're all where we're all carrying red solo cups out there today. Of course. Yeah. I mean it's part of the theme for yeah. sure. I just yeah. wasn't sure water how, you in got, them. how you got the idea. Of course there's water in them, yeah. Yes, water. yes, absolutely. Right. You, you we're know, just you, carrying a cup. Yeah, right, right, you, right. You, you wouldn't imbibe. Right. <laughs> uh so Steve, tell me about the the creation process. How long did it take you guys and, and where'd you get all your material and stuff like that? So for us, we're into it for three hundred eighty-seven dollars and about forty hours, twenty-four to forty hours. Three hundred eighty-seven dollars and forty-eight hours. Yeah. Wow. Now Bob Havens, I don't know where he is right now, but you know he's got months and months. Yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get Bob in here a little bit later on this morning. We're gonna talk yeah. about his creations uh, because he won last year. He came in first place, uh, which is awesome because for years he was he was like runner up and coming really yeah. really close, and he finally won it last. Year. Returning now, the rumor is that you actually shut down your business to build this stuff in. Yeah. Yep. Is that what happens? I shut it down today and tomorrow. So <laughs> we're really? obviously not driving home today. No. Right, right. Uh, I, yeah, listen, I, I love your support of the radio station. I, you, you know, you uh, like we said, you were. Uh, you were at our place of work on Wednesday. You were there yesterday. We, you know, at the drop of a hat, you're like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll cater your, yeah. your uh, birthday thing." Absolutely. Uh, and now you're here today. You're, t you know, you take off like you, you shut the business down. Uh, like, yeah. The, the you love are... you guys send me is unbelievable. That Impossible cheesesteak. We're we're starting today. Every Impossible cheesesteak, we're gonna donate one dollar to Phil Abundance. Awesome. Oh, that is awesome. It's, it, it's my favorite cheesesteak. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Hey, by the way, um, Steve, what what uh, sleds in the past have you built? What have, what have the themes been? We did a Gene Simmons guitar. Yeah. I remember that one? Uh, uh, we just saw it the other day. Yeah, they were running we back up. We did Fortune for Marissa. She was at the uh, casino one time. And yep. And a little episode down there. Yeah. Uh, my sister did a chainsaw, Bob, one year. All right. Um, we did the tram car. That was a nice epic Fail. That, <laughs> uh, we, and, and by the way, we have a prize for uh, best fail uh, yeah. today as well, our favorite fail. Anyway. How, how many people routinely, um, so on average, will work on one of your concoctions? Anywhere from five to ten. Everybody just shows up, brings beer, and we <laughs> yeah, obviously fire up the fryer and whatever else is in the grill. You Did know. you bring some food this morning? Oh, yeah. Yep. 
Uh, we have a tailgate going. Perfect. <laughs> After Excellent. we go down, we have brisket, we have pork, we have tri-tip. Um, Wait, what's a tri-tip? We tri got hot dogs. Do you have foreskin? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Wait, what's a tri-tip? What? Tri-tip is like the filet of barbecue. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. All right, well, listen, ma'am, we're excited to see the Solo Cup yep. and how you guys do today, but thank you for your continued yeah, support. Yeah, thank you. Good luck yeah, on the hill. We're sending Kelly down on the fastest sled, so awesome. oh, wow. we can roll her out a bit. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thank Good you. Good you, man. Steve Thanks Wilson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wilson thank you. Secret Sauce and Red Solo Cup. I love so, this. We were waiting for uh, another sled maker who is, like, right out front uh, or I guess it's just out back, maybe. Yes. Uh, and uh, so Mr. Peanut is who I'm talking about. We're trying to get their yeah. attention. Do you yeah. want me to throw a chair to the window? Um, I believe he's making his way up now, but I'm yelling. He's like, give me five minutes. Give me five minutes. I was no. like, okay, 459, yeah. 457. This, yep. this is a precise show. Yeah. Come yeah. on here. Come here, dude. Yeah. We're, we're sitting here. We're killing time waiting for you. Get your ass Peanut over here. here. All right. No, Come on. Not you. Not you. Not Come you. on you. over, Fredericks. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to you in a moment. Hang on a second, dude. A little faster, please, Mike. Come on, bud. Time is money. We're on the radio. There's over microphones here, right over there. Thank you, Bob. He brought me a cardboard poop knife. <laughs> <laughs> he just handed me a cardboard poop oh knife. Oh, my God. That's awesome. He made it out and of cardboard. And it's well made. What's up, Peanut? How you doing? Stressed, yeah. Stressed? Why? <laughs> um, February, we spent all month, like, nonstop. Yep. Uh, all night long. Uh, getting into the sled, we had it. We look, we needed butter. What? <laughs> by the way, we needed butter way, to get yeah. in. We need you're, butter? Dressed, you're dressed like Ken, and your delivery is like Ken. Are you hammered? Yeah. You no. seem to be hammered. No. Not yet? <laughs> no, it's still, it's from when he uh, had the crash as Mr. Peanut all those years ago. <laughs> it's, it's PTSD. No, his speech therapy yeah. is still we, working. We, we got here, and nobody was around to tell us which way to go. Oh. Yeah, we're on the wrong side. You're on the wrong side. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah. I, I noticed that. The Barbie... Sled, which is his theme. And by the way, he's dressed as Ken. He's wearing a fur coat. He's wearing the wig and the glasses and the whole thing. His shirt is off, by the way. Uh, and I'm like, why is his gigantic sled on the wrong side of the hill? And I just went and told Eric Simon. He's like, yeah, he's not supposed to be over there. Oh. So you took it upon yourself just to... Without... <laughs> yeah, no idea. We thought we could get over it. Uh, uh, so uh, so uh, what, what, where do things stand right now? Because you got to get it to the top of the hill. And yeah. it looks, it, the thing looks like it's rather heavy. We weighed it. It's six, 1,650 pounds. Oh, my God. It is 1,600 Jesus. pounds. And it's massive. And where do you build this? I, I mean, do, they, do, do you have to build it in segments? Yeah, my, my garage is 24 feet okay. long, and it's 23 and a half feet. So, <laughs> you, <laughs> 20, so, right up to you. so you build it intact and bring it up intact? Yeah, uh, yeah we put it in a budget truck. Oh, wow. my God. Dude. By the way, it's the it's the Barbie van. Yeah, it's awesome. what it is. It's it's all pink, as you can imagine. I can see some uh, palm trees and things like that. Yeah. Uh, and it's got a, I believe it has a stripper pole inside of it. It might. It might. It, it might. <laughs> and he's dressed as Ken, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. It, it took I described it. Oh you, oh, you did? I did, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I was, That's okay. Uh, I'm sitting right next else. to you. It's all good, man. <laughs> you guys get to see your, on the Instagram, the, uh, all, the all the Ken like all the oh yeah 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 no what what's what? happening yeah, explain it's like Ken dolls but with like our faces on them no oh, Kathy's yeah. in Target right, dude are we want to yeah. see that <laughs> yeah so so we you've themed us into your creation as well and so uh, it, besides uh, the Mr Peanut the the Peanut Mobile which is uh, epic and we all don't want to relive that again uh, <laughs> last year you did How the Grinch Stole Christmas that was awesome by yeah. the way what are a couple of the other ones that you've done throughout the years because you've been involved with this for years yep. and years Mike. Better Off Dead, the Camaro. Oh, yes. that was a good one. The Pope Mobile. Yeah, Pope Mobile. That was, that was nice. That was a pretty awesome. amazing one. Yeah, Minerva. The Minerva, all right. And Foot Juice. All right. <laughs> the giant foot. Foot Juice. And then, I, I like Turtles. They're the Turtles. That was the first year. We've been building since 2007. Wow. So, and wow. How, many, how many people on your team? Uh, they've come and gone. Um, but, yeah, I got to give a shout-out to, to Ed Dalp. Been my main guy. And... Um, do you guys ever win? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's wearing his medal. <laughs> oh, he's wearing the medal right That's now. Family truckster. Yeah, that was uh, nice, excellent. Well, listen, you've got some stuff to do. Obviously, you got some issues to cover, so we're gonna let you go in a second. Do me one favor, just to give you peace of mind. Yeah. Hold up the fingers and ask him to count it. All right, how many fingers am I holding up? Four. <laughs> yes. Oh, he's okay. Man. I'm okay. I'm holding up two, by the way. <laughs>
He's All right, fun. get out of here, Mike. Uh, Go yeah. take care of business. That's Mike Jor- yeah. Javorka, by the way. Mr. Mr. Hi, Mike. Peanut. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mr. Mike. Peanut. His craftsmanship is unbelievable. <laughs> he is. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Well, he's, a, he's a contractor. He can literally, literally build all kinds of cool oh, things. It's so. amazing. Yep, absolutely. All right, we have another guest who is stepping up and uh, is helping out with the coverage this morning. He's a virgin. Uh, a first-time uh, uh, viewer, whatever you want to call it, participant in Cardboard Classic. You know him from Crossing Broad. Uh, this is Kyle Pagan yeah. who is here with us this morning. Hey. How you doing, Kyle? Hey, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Nice to see you, man. So you've never done this before. I've never done this before. Are you here just to experience it, or did you? are you participating with a sled? I'm hoping someone will let me on this. <laughs> all, right, all right. I think they could yeah. be arranged. They're always asking for people to ride along, so you'll get an invite. Yeah, that's the fun thing about this event is it is very, very communal. And uh, and, and if you see a sled, that you, like a big one that you want to hop on, I would say I would venture to say you know it's almost a hundred percent guaranteed that they'll they'll find you a spot. But you're right. Make sure it's a big. Yep. You're a big dude, so you don't want to weigh down the. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So could be in the back or the front. Could be problematic. I don't know. Whatever you like. Probably the back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would yeah. think so. So you don't want the it to front end and dig into the snow. The so. only thing I will recommend is if the, if there is a uh, an elevated part of the sled to get on, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No, stay as close yeah. to the ground as you. Low possibly. to the ground. Harder they fall. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. How long have you been with uh, Crossing Broad? About two years now. Okay. Is it, it looks like a lot of fun. It is a great time. Excellent. I'm up here, aren't I? Yeah, totally, man. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I got to ask you um, right off the bat, uh, the big controversy in Philadelphia yesterday, Dollar Dog Night apparently going away. Yeah. There was a lot of coverage on it on your site, on, on Crossing Broad. Um, I understand the Phillies' position. Apparently, uh, 41,000 people throwing hot dogs at one another is not family-friendly, but the fans loved it. So there's, okay. there's like petitions out there mm-hmm. to bring Dollar Dog Night back already. What are your thoughts on it? Um, it's a, it's a, one of the best traditions, I think, in the history of Philadelphia. And we've had a lot of traditions in the history of Philadelphia. I just want to know, do $2.50 dogs not fly as far as dollars? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't think the Phillies provided a solution. The solution they came out with, people were throwing dogs and the concession lines were long. I don't know if anyone's been to a, a Phillies game outside of Dollar Dog Night. The concession stands are always long. So. Do you know what I think might be the case here? And, and tell me if this holds any water with you, is that maybe this, obviously, they throw this out, knowing that this is really not the end game, mm-hmm. but they make the big, uh, it's almost an awareness campaign. Okay. They say, well, you, you know, mind your manners. So here is what they're going to do. But they, the plan was always to rescind it and just make sure that people, we don't lose dollar dog night. Do you think that's possible? I like where your head's at. Yeah, I don't yeah. think the Bryce Harper extension happens with our dogs. Does it happen with $2.50 dogs? <laughs> Absolutely. That's where they're going to make up the cash? That's where we're going to make it. 150% price point now up. Have you ever been down to uh, spring training before? I have. It's the best. We're going down in two weeks, and uh, it's so cool, and we've talked about this a bunch, but like to see the number of Philadelphians uh, that totally are just down so there awesome. celebrating, it's really become Philly South. You guys broadcast it for Frenchies? No, uh, we're doing. Well, we're right next to yeah, Frenchies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frenchies right next. Yeah, yeah the Tiki. Park. Yeah, we're right next to there in, right there in the outfield, and then we're the next day we're going to be at Coco's cool. broadcasting live there, and that's uh, on the Bayside near Clearwater Beach. So the, the, a couple times when we've been there, they they take some uh, some practice out on the field, and and uh, we are in the line oh, yeah. of fire. Oh, it's yeah. pretty wild yeah, for batting practice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and still, even as a full blown adult, like <laughs> catching a fly ball, it's, awesome. it's, yeah. it's you know you turn into a child again. It's I've awesome. never bought one. I've never caught one in my life. Never. No. That's going to change. You, do you have, right? I have. What you do, Preston, is pick the kid who catches it and then slap him in the back of the head and do yeah, the yeah. grab and it. And then no. vomit on him. That's the trick, right? <laughs> Probably five or six years ago, you had a catch with Gabe Kapler out on the field. I up. did. Yes. It was awesome. And I got to throw out the first pitch. Yeah. Pretty and amazing. after that, we won the World Series. I'm one of those, if, if I'm in the outfield, I will take a glove with me. Oh, yeah. Just for the hell of it. And it doesn't matter watch. where I'm sitting in the stands. I always bring a glove with me. Do you really? Yeah. Every you kind of have to. I yeah. always wear a gimp mask. Okay. Yeah. Um, and how are you uh, treated? I'm not there for that kind of ball. Okay. <laughs> no, because I, uh, when I was a kid, uh, Ozzie Smith had a, a line drive foul ball that, uh, and I had just had, uh, I broke my hand earlier that year, and that Friday, because it was a Sunday game, that Friday I had the cast removed, and then he hits a screamer down the down the third base line, and I didn't have my glove. Uh, so ever since then, I it always had it on me. So uh, have you? Yeah. You ever caught? I think over 15, you can't burn a glove to the game. <laughs> really? You think it's a violation? I think it's a violation, yeah. Really? <laughs> I'd rather catch one than, uh, than go with bare hands and not catch it and then uh, have shame for the rest of my life. What's a better story? Yeah. Well, I don't know. 
I think I think like if uh, you you frown upon somebody bringing a glove into the game, your priorities are in the wrong place. Like, <laughs> <laughs> who, who Did you get Dollar Dog Night Band? It seems like a guy who would get Dollar Dog Night Band right there. Uh, he's he's a Dollar Dog dude, yeah. clearly. Yeah. yeah. Were you a part of that survey? I was not. No, I'm a fan of Dollar Dog Night. But uh, listen, I was watching uh, videos last night of uh, the 22 playoffs, the 23 playoffs. The excitement around the Phillies in this town is it's really cool because we didn't have it for the better part of a decade, and uh, you know for us to to go to spring training and then uh, what I guess probably a month from today or a month from yesterday the regular season begins yeah oh yeah. wow yeah. yeah all right what are you going to be doing today Kyle what's uh what's your plan we're going to be talking to everybody going down we're going to be talking to the crowd and everything getting people excited and everything and uh having a good time we love it. you're going to love it up there man it's it's, it's, yeah. it's it's crazy out there and this thing has been many years in the making and uh this location this is our, our second year here it just kicked it up that much more it's amazing yeah and I um, I'm a fan of your man on the street stuff and I was uh, talking a little bit uh, off air but like uh what I like about it is you know you <laughs> you let the people be themselves, but I never really feel like you're preying upon them. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you, you let the yahoos be the yahoos, yeah. uh, and you don't necessarily add to it. You're, you just put a microphone in front of their face. And <laughs> let them go. Add. Sometimes it's that easy. Yep. <laughs> well, Why you're make it a, hard? Yeah. You see a lot of that today. This is, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you get to, to witness this and experience this because this is very, very much like a, an Eagles tailgate, yeah. you know? It's a party out there. It's a party out there, yeah, there. And no the, doubt. the people are awesome. They're yeah, going to love sure. you. You will love it. All right, thanks, Kyle. Appreciate hey, you being yeah. here, man. Kyle Pagan from yeah. Crossing Broad. So he's going to head out and be a part of this whole thing. We are going to try. Yeah, come on over. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Uh, I, I see. I did not know she was on our team. <laughs> I didn't know that either. I mean, like, I, I think yeah. this is like, pure happenstance. Full, come around. Come around this way. Yeah. Uh, we have our friend Jen Fred from, uh, of course, Fox 29, who has been here year after year after year, and we love her to death. She's a little power pack. Yeah, that one It'll up be there. A smaller one. No, you can use the smaller one. <laughs> They're Hi. over my head. Hi, Jen. Hi, baby. How are Hi. you guys? Wonderful, sweetie. How you doing? I'm good. Excellent. And I think Kyle's really going to be like, holy cow. Yeah, yeah. Like, people who haven't seen it in person. You, yeah. You're exactly right. It, no matter how much, it's like the, the camp out for hunger. You can tell people about it, and they think they know what it's about until you get here. Yeah. And then it's like, it's, oh my God. And every year, I'm still like, they did it again. <laughs> um, okay, speaking of every year, remember last year, I was supposed to scare Kathy on the hill. Yes. We love Montage, that lightning, they have like one of the steepest drops in the east. Yep. Remember how I dangled from the snow cat with uh -huh. a string? I talked to her about it this week, and she was not interested. You, you talked to me about it by telling me it was the most dangerous thing to do here. <laughs> no, no, no. They do the safety, but it is like a snow cat hanging from a string from a 300-year-old tree. Oh. <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's how she risky. described it. I yeah. was like, yeah, I think I'm, I'm good. So we've come up with a new challenge. Okay. We're going to race. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it's Kathy versus Jen. Seven fit. Is, is this the first you're hearing of this? Uh, no, no, we, we're here. It, we, we heard tell, but we don't yeah, know we, the details. We don't know oh, the yeah. Specifics. So she, I haven't been on skis in 20 years. We were going to do skis. I'm a snowboarder. Oh, yeah. all right. I think to show our, our best look, really. Yeah. I think it should be me on my snowboard and Kathy on her skis. Sure. Will you allow that, Commissioner? Yeah. I, I just made that, Casey the commissioner. I think that's totally fine. And, uh, I skied with Kathy yesterday. Just prepare to have your ass kicked. Oh. What? Oh. I, did, I did text her. I said, how many times have you skied this season, and what did you drink last night? And she's like, is this an interrogation? <laughs> but like any good athlete, I want to know. Well, by, by the way, is this, is this not the, the classic battle royale on slopes all? Yes, it's yes. snowboarders yeah, yeah, and yeah, skiers, yeah, yeah. right? Right. And we're supposed to be like knuckle dragger thugs. Right. <laughs> like we're south. I don't know. I don't want to indicate any just, neighborhood. Just south. Gotcha. <laughs> Thanks gotcha. for saving me, but yeah. you didn't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, we're supposed to be like we hit the skiers. We're smoking pot. For the record, no pot has been smoked no. by me. No, yeah. it's, it's, I can't say what's happening out there. It's, right. it's mostly lewds. That you know. <laughs> I, I, there, in fact, there's footage. You guys should see it. It was, it was a classic snowboarder and skier colliding. No. Yeah, and, and of course, that, that's it in a nutshell. So, um, so wait, can we talk about your outfit? Oh, well, so this is, now this, you, okay, so you get together with a bunch of your friends, right? Yes. And you all wear the same. We do. You can thank Casey for this. This is what he decided that we would be wearing this year. Yeah, we're all wearing these jumper, these ski tipsy jumpers. Tipsy Elves outfits? And what's that? They're called Tipsy Elves. Yeah. Yes. Tipsy Elves? Yeah, that's, yeah, the, brand. that's the, brand. the brand. Oh, okay. How do we get sponsored by them? Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, this is what you do. Um, okay. You ask for them to spend some money to advertise, and then oh. they they come back and they say no. And then you say, okay, well, can you give us some uh, some snowsuits, <laughs> and uh, and we'll, we'll promote it on uh, social media, and they'll say yes. I love That's it. What you know, these come in like they have like Taco Bell hot sauces on them. They're they're like kind of a thing. Oh, right? I, I want I want that. I know. Yeah. And so my teenager, like they were in middle school last year, the daughters, right? They look at us when the moms have them on. And they're like, you guys are so dumb. This is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, this year they're like, "Can we wear your suits?" Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I thought, man, if we could all like have matching outfits, yes. that would be really, really great. So, uh, I, and I brought the idea to these guys, and they all loved it. But unfortunately, everybody had a different idea of, as to which snowsuit uh, oh. we wear. And really, what it boiled down to, and why we're why we are wearing the snowsuits that we're wearing, is because they had men's and women's sizes sizes in this design. So Some they, of the designs that they had were only men. They have great stuff. They, they do. Really they do. Stuff. And you know what? My um, girlfriends, what they do is they do, like, different belts. Yeah. So, like, they all have, like, oh. one of my girlfriends has, like, a Gucci belt. <laughs> but I'm just wearing it as it is. I'm wearing it with pearls. You okay, can't call yes, it. Yes, yeah, you I can accessorize it, it accessorize. however you wish. Yeah, but our, 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 coin. our suits have um, ha hoods and yours. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's in. Oh, it's in? <gasps> yeah. Uh, Wait, do, do hang on. A, hold, hold on. Question. Yeah. Did this happen by accident, or did you know that we were going to have the exact same outfit that you're wearing? My girlfriend's? No, no. The one that you're wearing she, right now. Her girlfriend, she bought it years ago this with her I've been this for years. You guys are on, you're following me. So you Wow, this, I didn't know that. You've had this exact look for years. I didn't know that. Like last year. Yeah, me wow. Neither. This, like the so fact it's, that we, for those who don't know, it's the exact same suit that we yeah, have. Yeah, so Preston, after Casey ordered ours, I knew Jen because I follow Jen on social media and yeah. I saw wow. all her friends' trips, so I knew she had it. So I told her to bring so her. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, Forget okay. about Elisa Frederico. I'm a stylist. <laughs> Okay. We're ripping you off. Yeah, because when you yeah. came walking up, I'm like, oh, Jen did the same thing. She got, uh, I guess somebody, it? we included her in yeah. this. How no. You guys are so sweet. Now, listen, uh, enough of the chat. The race is on. We got to go. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I I go yeah, get out of here. Go, go. We want to see this. Now, just real quick. We're doing two snowmobiles. No, three snowmobiles. Kathy gets a snowmobile to get us up. Mm -hmm. I get a snowmobile to get us up. And then Tom, the camera bot guy, who is from Scranton. Where is Tom? He's over there somewhere. He's right there with his camera. Okay. He is going to be on a third snowmobile, so he will be filming it via snowmobile. Okay. Oh, wow. All right, so and we by get the way, action. We didn't ask permission at work. Okay. So, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, you Go for it. You've lost your life. You almost lost, lost your life a few times here, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I love you guys, and I'll be back. All right. We love you. Jen Fred, yeah. Fox 29, and they're going to go cover this on Fox 29, by the way. So oh. it was the one year, I think she was, uh, it was the fastest. We we laughed her out of, this is with Jack Frost, and we laughed her, uh, uh, you know, out of the room because we thought there's no way she's going to make the run, and she did. This, on this Highly manicured, much better situation. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be pretty, uh, yeah, pretty kinetic. We shall see. All right. Well, listen. I want to go ahead and take a break uh, because we're going to try our best to get done by ten o'clock ish. Yeah, we need to and uh, and get out and get the cardboard classic started. So I want to stay ahead of that. We're going to break and come back in a second. We're at the lodge at Montage Mountain for cardboard classic twenty twenty four. Bizarre files coming up next. So stay with us. We rock and see. Match your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right, thank you very much, Nick. Uh, before it becomes Friday, we have to play our froggy song. So, Jason, let's go. at Montage Mountain for Cardboard Classic. We are now going to do the Bizarre File. So, Jason, let's get into it, please. Now, bizarre. WMMR presents Kristen and Steve's Bizarre, bizarre File.
Brought to you this morning by our friends at Helium Comedy Club, bringing the laughs to Philly for many years. Helium Comedy has the best comics of today and tomorrow, live every week. Tickets and lineup at heliumcomedy.com. All right, we'll start with this. A man has been rescued two days after accidentally driving his car off of a cliffside in California. We just had another yes, car again in Hawaii the other day driving off a cliff. Well, on Wednesday, the California Highway Patrol confirmed that they had sent a team to search the coastline from Post Ranch to Big Sur to Monastery Beach in Carmel on Tuesday morning after a man left work on Sunday at around 11.30 p.m. and failed to make it home. Uh, the rescued male and his vehicle uh, were located approximately 400 feet down a cliff Dude. before the Big Sur fire chief had uh, roped down to the victim and began to assess his injuries. That's insane. He was uh, frantically waving a makeshift flag. Oh. The rescued man uh, told authorities he swerved to miss some deer in the road um, while dri- he was driving home, which resulted in him veering off the roadway, rolling several hundred feet down the cliff edge. He added he had been, he had been ejected through the sunroof as the car rolled down the hill. Attention. You're an idiot. Yeah. A lot of times if you get ejected from the car, you, dead. you don't make it. You're dead. Uh, the CHP airplane, uh, an A-71, was already in Monterey County for a separate call and responded to the area to search the cliffs. Uh, they located the vehicle, and then the H-70 helicopter responded, confirming there was no beach access or trails at the collision site, nor was the vehicle visible from the roadway. And the CHP aircraft hoisted the victim and the Big Sur fire chief from the crash site before flying the driver to a medical center for further treatment and care. So I know people who are just terrified to drive on that stretch of road. It's beautiful, but people freak out all the time. Yeah, because one wrong little move. And you're gone. You're down the cliff. A Florida alligator was caught on video lunging at a couple riding in a golf cart. The gator can be seen walk, walking toward a pond before lunging at the vehicle. The golf cart swerved, almost crashed into the water, and once the couple got away, the, great, the gator uh, crept into the pond. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission advised people to be aware of the possibility of alligators when you in, are in or near fresh or brackish water. Yeah, when you see that footage, you see how quickly they move. Yeah, the agency also says gators are, rarely cause injuries in Florida, but watch out anyway. A Portland woman has earned bragging rights after securing the Guinness World Record for the largest female tongue circumference. Wow. With a tongue <laughs> circumference of 5.21 inches, which, exactly. is, which is apparently larger than a soda can, wow. uh, Jenny Duvander now holds a new title. Now, she told Guinness World Records that she wasn't aware of the record until... His, her husband holds the record for cleanest taint. Until she... <laughs> And her son saw male winner Braden McCullough in the book's 2023 edition. The West Virginia man's tongue circumference measured 6.3 inches. Devander proceeded to measure her own tongue at home, knowing that she has, quote, been able to flex her tongue for as long as she can remember. Her dentist also measured it by wrapping it in floss last May. It's the goddamnest thing I've ever seen. Her son is, uh, who is, uh, had pushed her to submit the application, <laughs> edged her to do it. Evan said he, she said, Evan. She said that Evan loves Guinness World Records and pours through it all the time. Mama, you have a super huge tongue. Uh, the record holder explained she typically showcases her unusual talent when other people are discussing what tongue tricks they can do. She noted it isn't a particularly useful skill, but as a flute player, it is helpful when playing fast notes. She said when you articulate a note on a flute, they call it tonguing. And apparently she can do that. Yeah, they sure well. do. So she's got the largest Mommy, you tongue try the vagina contest. circumference. A man suffered a horrifying ordeal in Germany this week when his pet dog about the size of a Jack Russell Terrier bit off his penis and ate it. Oh, oh my God. Boy. Neighbors alerted the police early on Tuesday morning on account of the dog's incessant barking coming from the man's home at around 2 a.m. Oh, my boy. Upon arriving at the property, the first responders heard pained groans coming from inside. At this point, they broke down the door to find the 66-year-old man and his dog. Police Jeez. quickly realized the man's life was in danger, so he was rushed to the hospital. Neither the man's penis or an instrument of the crime has been recovered from the scene so far. Uh, the victim has also been unable to provide information himself due to his health. Officials said that most likely hypothesis being considered is that the dog was the cause of the man's injuries and that he ate it. I mean, it would be very easy to bleed out after an injury like that. Yeah, the man is uh, was put into an artificial coma upon his arrival at the hospital. He's still under right now. So. Wow, man. All right, we'll do one more story, and then we will wrap it up. 
A family of six, including a grandmother and four children, slept outside of a Hawaii airport after their United Airlines flight was canceled. Uh, Timmy John claims that all hotel rooms within 50 miles were booked solid. The airport itself was also closing for repairs. And when John asked an airline employee what her family could do, the worker allegedly replied, and I quote, Sometimes I see people sleeping over there and pointed to benches outside. Oh, my God. <laughs> just Thank you. Out. It's that kind of attention to detail that will have us back as customers again. Uh, John says that she spent the night smashing cockroaches and listening to construction. United said they will provide compensation. How do you like your back, Grandma? <laughs> uh, to delayed customers. Yeah, that's messed up. It's horrible. And that is what I have in the bizarre file for you this morning. How we doing? Doing well. Yeah. Yeah, very excited. Good. Good. Yeah, um, Kathy and uh, Jen Freds are making their way to the top of the mountain right now. So we, we determined we're not going to be able to get audio of this in, in uh, motion, right? No, but uh, uh, Fox 29 is filming it, so right. it'll make it on TV. We'll be able to see that later on, maybe repost that and, yeah. uh, and see who wins the face-off against uh, snowboarders versus skiers. Kathy is skiing, uh, and Jen is snowboarding, and they're racing each other. And Casey, you said that, that uh, you watched her ski yesterday, and she's... She's a decent skier. All right. uh, yeah, she does. Uh, she does a great job, and and you know, and she's kind of like open for anything. And Jen was talking about the uh, the the one really steep dive. Uh, if it's the one I saw yesterday, holy crap! It. I mean, it's basically like straight down. They're not wow. doing the black diamond, though, are they? I no, no, no. I think they're just doing the the intermediate okay. as well. Yeah, I mean, every year for Cardboard Classic, uh, Kathy's dad would come up and just to go skiing. So, um, you know, Kathy grew up with it. I was trying to figure out. Do you guys remember what year was the first Cardboard Classic? Was it two thousand six? I don't remember. I think it would be. I think two thousand six. We got on it pretty quickly, right? I mean, it was something you wanted to do for a long time. So, uh, I think I'm going to say two thousand six. So our yeah, first year at probably was, yeah. was two thousand five. I think so too. And and um, day off at the slopes at existed for a long time for MMR, yep. and then we we added that because we used to have two yep. days off at the slopes. Of the oh, they used to, and, that, and that picture keeps popping up in the in the green room of uh, you and I, Preston, when the idea was, and afterwards, we'll take all the cardboard sleds and we'll have a big bonfire. Yep. And we learned quickly that, no. You Not a good that. idea. <laughs> Not a good idea. That stuff gets really hot. It was insanely hot. And creates a pond, yeah. a small lake, if you will, after when it melts the snow. So we stopped doing that right away. But, yeah, Nick, it looks like we're, we're approaching a 20-year anniversary for Cardboard Classic. It yeah. really is one of my favorite events. And, um, you know, we, we have fun and we do the show. But, like, to see the, the creativity and the engineering feats of the listeners every year, it, it, I, I'm... I'm amazed at how every year they blow my mind. You know, yeah. like every uh, year they they re, they up, you know um, do better than they did the year before. I would not. I have no ability to focus in on a task like this. Mm -hmm. And the fact that what we're seeing already gathering here, that people collectively took the time to put these things together, yeah. blows me away. Um, I think uh, so. I was talking to somebody who may or may not be a judge uh, for you know today. And they said um, they already have no idea. Like, <laughs> oh, no kidding. Yep. Yeah, they yep. said, like, the, the sleds are so he, amazing. He said, because I spoke to that same person, he said that uh, he, he's never seen more craftsmanship. And, and this is somebody who's been at all the Cardboard Classics. And uh, he said, like, there, it, to give an example, uh, there's a, apparently a full-size Wawa store. What? Wow. What? <laughs> With the counters and, and everything. Uh, there is a swing that will be like a, a, a swinging while they're coming down the hill. I bet you that's clutch, man. Uh, what else he say? He started rattling off a few of them, but apparently it's going to be a banner year for design. Well, we have banner weather. Uh, it, the, the vibe here is terrific. And, and, and the little tweaks that we were asking for last time, they are all implemented. And I was, I was talking to a listener just a little while ago, and he was here last night. He was talking to a local who wasn't sure what the Cardboard Classic was. And when he described it to him, he's like, oh, they're going to be building these little things going on. And he right. showed him a video of the space shuttle yeah, yeah, yeah. and the monster's house and right. all that stuff. And the guy was like, oh, my God. Yeah, we're not I had around. no idea. Yeah. And to give you some perspective, we just had Mr. Peanut on and his creation, which is the, the Barbie uh, van. Um, it weighs 1,600 pounds. It's eight <laughs> Tons heavy. No. That's how big these things are. Almost a, one ton. Yeah. One ton. How oh, I'm sorry. Almost eight, yeah. eight tons. <laughs> that almost a ton <laughs> of weight. Yeah. It's Close insane. Enough. It's still very eight heavy. Tons. Yeah. That is a hundred tons. <laughs> it's like Regis measuring yeah. the size of a semi. That thing. And let me tell you something. These fellows, they built a hundred trillion ton sled. 
I don't uh, know how. Look at it. The, the, go ahead, Gase. No, no, just uh, how do they get it to the top of the hill? Well, right, the, the thing is, yeah. again, a lot of these do come up completely intact, built. Uh, to me, that boggles the mind. So they'll rent a huge, like, box truck. Yep. And put them in that. Yep. Now, we uh, we talked to Peanut earlier. We talked to Steve Wilson earlier. We're going to talk to a couple other sled makers yes. in the next segment. And one of them lost a piece of their sled on the PA Turnpike. <laughs> yeah. That like, always happens. Uh, like a big piece. Are you kidding? I, I yeah. think I, so. I don't want to hear that story. Yeah, Marissa? Yeah, I did some digging uh, with some of these sled makers earlier this season, I guess like a month ago, talking to them about the tips and tricks. And the things that they have created, like putting tubes at the bottom so that they can run ropes yep. through it and then use that to pull it up the hill. That's it's just kind of genius. That's and, brilliant. Yeah, I would, see, I'm too st I would never no. think of that. For those gigantic ones and then the smaller ones, pulling them up on tarps, like they have all the tricks and all. It's pretty cool. Excellent. All right, well, listen, we got a lot to get to. Obviously, we're going to talk some more of the creators this morning. Uh, and good chance that we might have Ed Roland of Collective Soul stopping by this morning to chat a little bit about Mountain Fest and the yeah. show tonight uh, around 5, 5.30, I think it's going to be taking place. And again, as you pointed out, Preston, the stage is literally right out the window. Here. Yep. Let's take a break. We'll come back in a second. Montage Mountain. That's where we are. Cardboard Classic 2024. Back in a little bit on MMR. Perfect. All right. Thank you very much, Kathy. And uh, this is kind of new this year because of our setup and where we are. We get a chance to meet some of our favorite sled builders. It's been the one thing we've always missed because of the placement of them yeah. in years past. And now they're right up on us. Yeah. All up in our crap. Maybe we should call them the architects or something. The architects. There's, there's way be, way more involved than just building. There's the creators. The creators, if you will. And uh, one of our favorites is here at Lakeside Collision. We got yeah. Dave Thompson and company. Hey. What's up, Dave? Hey, how you going, guys? Uh, nice to see you, bud. Thanks for being here. And uh, <laughs> let's first talk about your attire and what you're wearing this morning. A big part of Cardboard Classic is dressing the part. You have to be the character. You've Absolutely. got to be. you got to get really into it exactly, like, you know, the whole thing. We've done it every year as much as we can. Yeah, and so this year I see you are Elwood Blues. Yes. And uh, who is uh, portraying Jake this every morning? Here we got Biscuit, and he is Jake. What's Biscuit. up, Biscuit? Biscuit. How you we doing, even buddy? have Aubrey... As the nun. The penguin! <laughs> she's here. Hey, Aubrey. I love it. And she has a, she's got a yardstick yes, with her. Yes, she does. So from the Blues Brothers at the beginning of the movie, she's the one that sends them on their mission yes. from God yeah. and gets started. So you guys have created, and you let us know well in advance what your idea was this year, uh, the Bluesmobile, but included with that, of course, at that time, when that movie came out, it held the record for the most car crashes of any movie ever filmed. Yeah. Absolutely. That was great. Yeah. And so you guys are paying homage to that, right? Yes. In we, what way? We were looking at towards, um, we go down the hill to be the end of the movie <laughs> where they're chasing the car and they've got all the cop cars going down there. So I with the Bluesmobile. And then we've got 10 mini police cars, kind of like Barbie Jeep type thing. Um, they're going to be following it down. I don't know if they're going to, how well they're going to make it down. If they crash on the way down, hey, oh, well, that's it, part of the movie. Yeah, yes. it feeds into the narrative, absolutely. Right. So there will be a person in each one of those small cop cars? Oh, yeah, they got that little little, cop, little police hats. <laughs> um, the Lakeside Collision team, how many people are there with you? Uh, today we have about 14 people are here. Okay, 14, 14 people. <laughs> Jackie Bam Bam came by your shop. Yeah, he stopped by. And uh, it was about a week ago on Monday night, and yeah, you got to be careful when you invite Jackie into your home. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> oh, my God, there he is! Oh! Oh! I'm on a mission from God! Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, you do have to be careful, but he came by and he did a uh, little uh, report on uh, your guy's progress, and he, he filmed everything, and you had... All the most minute details, all the way down to the, like the radio inside the car, right? Well, Jackie helped us put the radio in. Yeah. Video that on, um, actually on WMR.com, so you can, anybody who wants to watch that, that's on there. Um, but we also have got the cigarette layer with the ashtray, the whole thing like that. Of course, the cigarette layer doesn't work. That's right. No, but that's, that's something to think about it. And then that's a lot of these things, especially you guys. You guys are, are next here. But the meticulous stuff that most people don't even see, they they, they yeah. attend to that. Well, like the cigarette lighter. So yeah. that's in the beginning of the movie. Yeah. He pushes in the cigarette, lights a cigarette, and he throws it out the window. And he's yeah. like, the car's great. Fix the cigarette lighter. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's, that's a wonderful little detail that only you guys probably would know about had you not got on the air with us here. Yeah, I hope a lot of people 
you'll see that when they get here too. <laughs> yeah. We did a bunch of pictures with it, and so everybody awesome. sees that, you know, little details of that type of thing. That's All right. a good point. Is yeah. it when you guys are in the staging area, it, it before the cardboard classic is kind of a museum of these vehicles. Yeah, and um, by the way, I, I've known Dave for a number of years. He rides on uh, Team Rock and Rollers in the in the Men to the Shore, and Dave is a very very generous guy. And as a matter of fact, I believe you left a memento for somebody, anybody to grab on the PA Turnpike on your way up here. <laughs> yeah, um, we lost the hood to the car. <laughs> <laughs> hood to the car. Yeah, it, it, was, it was going down. Pretty much right when we got on the PA Turnpike, we're cruising along at 75, <laughs> and my son calls me from the car, the truck behind me. <laughs> and he's like, you just lost something big and square. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And we did have some extra cardboard we had stuffed in it. And I thought, well, it was one of the extra pieces going off of it. Well, when we got to the rest stop at one point, we realized the hood was gone. Oh, no. And not only that, there was a caravan of cars. The truck after it, which Biscuit was driving, he ran it right over. And he looked back. He said, track trailer hit it. So it's, it's trash. It's gone. Oh, man. But luckily, we're very good people. Hey, we're a collision shop. Yeah. We've got spare parts. We yeah. <laughs> so we're out there making a hood right now. Are you serious? Uh, uh, yes. You replaced that. We're doing that. That's something that a lot of people don't realize is that in the years we've been doing this, and there, we realized we lost a few years during the COVID thing, but that the turnpike becomes sort of a graveyard yep. of cardboard pieces that didn't make it all the way up. Yep. Yeah, there's you, debris. You're coming up there, and it's, it's dark out. You just yep. There's something funny. You just run it over. <laughs> By the way, I want to point out another little detail I just noticed to these guys. Show them your knuckles, if you would, please. Uh, they have the, oh. the tattoos of Elwood and Jake on That's their knuckles. Great. That's fantastic. Can you do me a favor? Can you hit one of them with the uh, uh, with, with the be her pleasure. Place? Okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and there you go. I love it. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, good luck to you today. We're excited to see how <laughs> 10, 11 sleds total make total it down. 11 sleds. It's the big car. That's full size. Now, like okay, I did like last year, we had Smokey and the Bandit. Which yeah. Was oh, it was we insane. We had two full size cars. Um, we won the one year because um, we had the Wheel of Fortune. Yes. Oh, that, was um, that was really great. <laughs> yep. It's a lot, you know, a lot of fun. This yeah. is, and I'm, I really want to thank you guys for giving me a like outlet for my creativity. Yeah. Um, you know, wintertime, I don't have a lot. In the summertime, if you're ever down in Wildwood, on First and Second Street, you'll see me making uh, sand sculptures. And that's what I do in the weekend. No way! Yeah, I make all sorts of different things. Oh, uh, like the big ones? Big. Um, they're a pretty good size. Okay. Um, Biscuit says you know, they're big. Yeah, they yeah. are. They're definitely big. They're um, uh, more than full size. Wow! <laughs> that's All right, well, that's gotta, what I spend the summer doing down the beach in Wildwood. <laughs> we got to see that. Do you know what? Yeah. In, yeah. I'm sorry. I was just going to notice that that in, in in many ways the people that populate this and and put their time and effort are doing things in and around your neighborhoods that you enjoy. They're always involved. They're always just making things much more fun. So thank you to you guys for doing yeah, we, that. We always try to do it. Just, it. We do this, and it's it's all for the fun. Yeah. yeah. It's. You know, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bragging rights if you get a trophy. <laughs> yeah. We'll take that's it. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what we're doing. Over here, basically, it's just for the fun. Well, you make the event. So thank you, Dave. We appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Good luck with everything today. Woo! Woo! Yeah! All right. yeah! Dave Thompson. Yeah. Lakeside Collision. And uh, just one of the many groups of colorful characters here. Preston, I have a, a Blues Brothers a bit of trivia for you. You may or may not you know. May or may not know. The line. The use of unnecessary violence in the apprehension of the Blues Brothers has been approved. Right. You know that police dispatcher? No. Do you know who he is in another movie? This is so random. Somebody pointed it out to me at Christmas time. It's the same guy that is in the parody Christmas movie in Home Alone. Keep the change, you filthy <gasps> That's animal. That That's that guy. That's him? the yeah. same guy, yeah. You, you filthy he, animal. He That's awesome. Two main movie roles in his entire life. The first is the police dispatcher in Blues Brothers, and the second is the guy. I, I would say let's get that guy on the show if I wasn't pretty sure he's dead. I think he's yeah, dead, yeah. He's yeah. kind of up there. But that. two very memorable roles, and uh, when I was a kid or, or, you know, when I was younger, I had no idea that that Home Alone movie was fake. I didn't know. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. They just made that for what the What was movie. the name of that movie? Angels with, like, Filthy Souls or something yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a riff on Angels with Dirty Faces. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Wait, so that movie on the TV is not real. No. Correct. Correct. Yeah, it's uh, made for Home Alone. But that's awesome that that actor's the same guy. Same nice. guy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we stand with greatness before us. Uh, he's last year's champion. A luminary. And, and he is, uh, he's the guy that helps out all the time and, uh, and wants to be a, a part of events just because he's a good guy. And he is a part of the Delco Cardboard Building <laughs> Bitches. You may have heard us mention his name before. This is our friend Bob Haven. Hey! Who is hey, there? bitches. Hey, what? How you doing, man? Good, good. It's good to see you guys. Um, let me tell you right off the bat. Yep. This year, 
mm -hmm. is going to blow last year away. No oh. kidding. Wow. Uh, so we got up here last year. We saw some of the sledge, and I started thinking, hey, man, our chicken has a chance. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? So I'm out there today, and I'm like, hey, we got a chance. I'm like, look at that one. <laughs> okay, there's you, you got to get out there and take a look they yeah we we, we we heard from a, a couple of people that it is stepped up uh quite a bit in the uh creativity and and the whole production is pretty badass it it did it really did and um like i said the chicken last year we had a lot of detail yep and this year chicken was amazing had an idea in the back of my head and i'm like hey guys let's try this and uh the detail on this wally world sled yeah is going to make the chicken look like he's still in the egg. <laughs> well, the world okay. is going to make it's the chicken crazy. look like nothing. All right. Wow. So, so you at last year was a Gene Simmons chicken, uh, and this year is Wally World. What what made you think of Wally World? What why'd you want to go with that? I wanted to do a roller coaster, so we um, incorporated <laughs> the moose. <laughs> yes. If you're not familiar with the movie for the younger listeners, yep. yeah. Um, Chevy Chase shows up, and the moose tells him the park's closed, and he punches him in the nose. Yep. So, of course, we have a seven-foot moose outside nice. on board the sled. That's the small part of the sled. Okay. And then he wants to go on the big rides. Yes. And he goes on the Screamy Mimi. Yeah. Yes. And that roller coaster is five cars long, and it has a 15-foot drop. <laughs> and at the top of the roller coaster is the Big Wally World sign. Oh, it's, you know, at a certain point, we had to put a cap on the height of these things because... And no, you, you don't. You, you, no, you don't. You guys, uh, uh, no, we, uh, 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 but you guys answered by just going laterally. Uh, yeah. It's insane. Uh, yeah, th 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 like no more um, second levels for, for right, people, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, but that, you said moose so many times, I have to hit this button. Why don't you forget the and, moose? For a moment. There you go. <laughs> and, uh, guys, part of the thing we enjoy doing is we make a lot of signs. Like if there's any first-time Cardboard Classic fans out there, we have signs that for them to hold, get pictures, we invite them on our sled. We put a post out on the Facebook post uh, page. If anybody's wearing red, they're going to get a, a yellow rally towel. Oh, nice. So hopefully we're going to see a lot of red rally a lot of red out there and a yeah. lot of rally towels. We make a whole lot of signs <laughs> like this one. Who's Lou? Lou? I love it. And uh, we have actually and a we actually Lou. brought Lou. That's Lou. <laughs> because he said he told me he couldn't be here today. <laughs> Aww. And then this other side says, sorry, folks, park's closed. We're closed for a two-week repair to clean and repair America's favorite family fun park. That's fantastic. So let me ask you, all things considered, wow. you don't have to give it. How many man hours for this? Give us a rough estimate. I started building the sled the weekend after New Year's. So, and, and the weather cr was crazy this yeah. year. We bought a 13 by 20 foot enclosed canopy <laughs> that we stored all the cardboard in. If it was raining, we couldn't work outside. We did things inside the house in my basement. I mean, our original name was the dining word, dining, dining room yeah. cardboard yeah. building. Bit. Wow, wow. And we've grown out of the dining room. <laughs> hey, so, I, I have a question, Bob. When you, you know, you and the other groups that, that build these really detailed big ones that you spend a lot of time on, they are special creations. By the time you're done, you, you give it, you get one run. And that's it, and it's done. It is a it is a yeah. single voyage vessel that you've made, yeah. and then it goes bye bye. Do, yeah, Stop, Preston. Are you get a little upset. <laughs> oh my God, that's the hardest part. It's it really got to be right. You work so hard. hard. On it's this. so hard. Aren't you? Uh, like I said, are you uh, there, so there is. I mean, forgive me if I'm having a brain fart about it. A, a kind of a quasi museum to some of the pieces. Some one of the participants has kept pieces just kind of to live in perpetuity so that like people... the tiki people did tiki for, people for a while did, yeah. as a matter of fact because john from um sequoia outback, sequoia outback uh held on to some stuff and in fact he has it on display at sequoia outback does he not i believe so okay. yeah so. yeah we're, we're hoping to keep a couple things um we got a couple surprises that i'll let you see when you get outside all right okay. but like i said the seven foot moose <laughs> we hope he ends up at uh some of the tailgate parties. All right. Terrific. Last yeah. year, Steve Wilson had the Gene Simmons head at his tailgate party in the bar here behind us. Love it. And it, it was a lot of fun. Excellent. And if I can just th thank some of our teammates, the amount of time that my sister and Marie and my wife letting us build this thing at my house and feeding everybody every weekend, and then a teammate, Heather, who did two beautiful pieces of art for us and who couldn't come because she broke her wrist um, last weekend, so she's home. I hope you know she can get well fast. But it's it's ridiculous the amount yeah. of time. Uh, you know, my brother, uh, my buddy Reese, my son, like so many people I can't even name them came over to help me. When during the week, like I said, we work on it at the weekend. 
during the week I come home from work and I'm putting another four or five hours into the small detail work. Well, this year, I got that help with all the girls, pretty much, with the detail work. It's impressive. It all begins with you, though, man. Yeah, you're, you're the guy who really spearheads this, and the results are obvious. So we're looking forward to it. Yep, Thanks, excited man. to see it. Yeah, people ask me, do you draw it out? Draw it out for me. Yeah. I can't draw it. Like, yeah. I draw it in my head, Yep. and then I walk out there, and there it is. It, it, wow. It's awesome. It's crazy. All right, Bob, crazy. good to see you. We'll see you out on the hill, all right? All right, thanks, Excellent. guys. Bob Haven! Yeah. Hey! He is an amazing man. The uh, Delco Cardboard Building Bitches, uh, his group. He's the, wow. Well, he's GOAT status, right? Yep. I mean, yeah, there's a, we actually have a couple of GOATs. No, he's a champion. So yeah. he won last year, so absolutely. Speaking of champions. Kathy Romano is with me. <laughs> uh, she and Jennifer Frederick went out from uh, Fox 29, went out, and they had a race. Where is Jen, by the way? I know we said we weren't going to put her on, but. She, ha I believe, has another hit, so okay. I I'm not sure where she is. She likes to do a few bumps. So we had, uh, we had Kathy on skis and Jen on snowboard, and they went and raced, and it, apparently they filmed it, and how did it go? It really wasn't a race. Yeah. Did you kill her? I mean, I could have, I would have been down in like two seconds. That she, but I think typically <laughs> skiers are faster than snowboarders, right? I don't know. I, I would think I so. Feel like they I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would think so. Um, yeah. Uh, so I kind of slaloming on us. Well, she's also tiny. Yeah. She's uh, she's uh, very and, and you go a little slower if you're smaller. Yeah. Now she know? said she kept her turns uh, smaller because snowboarders sometimes you know like take up the whole. Yep. Uh, yep. So she said she kept the turns smaller so she could you know try to keep up with me. So I didn't. I I kind of slowed down so that I could you know we could be on camera at the same time. <laughs> so if, if you had gone full bore, how how long you would have gotten to the bottom? How long? would you have been waiting before she got down there? I would have gotten like a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Wow. No, I, I think we both could have. The, it, also, the issue was the um, snowmobile, the way it takes turns, um, they kind of have to like lean with it. And he had the uh, photographer on with him. So the guy from Montage and then the Jen's photographer were on the scene. So they were like kind of slowing us up a little bit too. Uh, but right. it was... It was fun. It was a good. It was a good run. It was a um, one of the green ones case over here that we couldn't get to yesterday. Oh man! And it was all groomed. It's actually closed for today, so it was like beautiful. Yeah, I was going to ask you. Were out there yesterday, Kathy? Uh, how are the conditions? How, how's it looking for the sleds? I th yesterday they made so much snow when we were here. I mean, every snowmaking machine was on for as much as I could see. So uh, yesterday was actually great skiing, and it looks great out there today. Wow. Was it, would you call it powder pack powder? Pack pack! <laughs> I'm a bit. <laughs> Marissa brought me a picture just now and handed it to me of the, of the Wawa, uh, oh, the Wawa oh, sled. God, it's got a full, you know, the, the uh, dry stack bricking uh -huh. that they have and everything. Oh. It's got a retaining wall? It's got it's got a gas pump. Oh Holy my God. Oh, that's crap. awesome. It's got a cardboard full-on Wawa wow. gas pump. Is that the gas pump that you drove away with in your car? Yes, <laughs> and I had the actual uh, nozzle still stuck in my car. Uh, amazing. Incredible. I can't wait to see this stuff. This yeah, thing. yeah. I, again, you, this judge that we uh, were keeping anonymous for obvious reasons was, I think, the weight of trying to decide which one was going to win. Yeah. Uh, it just on the design level is weighing on this person. We have $1,000 for best design, uh, second place $500, and then third place 250 and the best tito's handmade vodka themed sled gets a thousand dollars this year fastest sled which are the small toboggan style ones we're giving away 500 bucks for that and then we have a favorite fail uh prize as well and that is tickets for the entire team to the mmr but nice pretty sweet deal nick what were you pointing out uh correct me if i'm wrong but over by the bar uh is there tito's on tap i thought i saw a tito <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 oh my god so uh tito's came prepared as well thank you well not only that speaking of tito's uh we have, we have jello shots yes uh mr vile that yeah that's our name yeah. preston and steve in jello shots so oh, that's, that's great that's paul vile paul vile okay Okay. Yeah, the, the Vile family is so talented. Casey alluded to that uh, earlier in the week. Uh, Kurt is a great musician. Sammy's an awesome music musician as well. Sammy did a jingle for us. Um, but uh, Paul is out there, Steve, right now uh, firing <laughs> jello shots <laughs> with a bow and arrow. So and he, they have the, the jello shots with pop rocks, or you can just get the straight jello shot. But he has got a bow, like a bow and arrow, and that's how he's firing jello shots to our listeners that's amazing this sign does look great and do you notice that some of the jello shots are missing yeah well <laughs> they, i ate some yeah. i, I ate in the some. lodge early this year because last year kathy apparently we didn't even get time to take a photo of it <laughs>
All, all like wow. the sales staff and everybody dug right in. Wow. All right, well, listen, I'm looking at the clock. Looks like we have time uh, to maybe go through the connoisseur a little bit. Oh, all right. Okay. If you guys don't mind, I apologize to uh, spring this on you. And uh, I'm not sure, but I think it's brought to you by Mini Melts. Uh, we don't have our Mini Melts freezer with us here uh, at Montage Mountain. And it's not cold enough up here for the Mini Melts. It has to be yeah. below freezing. Wait a minute. What? Get over here, Eric. Come over here. Eric Simon, our Eric's promotion coming. director. Get on the microphone. Okay. What? This one? Yeah. All right. The, uh, Minnie Mouse was able to make it this morning. They're here in the lodge. What? Shut up. They're going to be doing for some free samples for people out there. Ah! They got prizes to give away. They All made right. it. I love right, so it. Let, let me try this, Preston. All right. It's time for the connoisseur. Yes. And Minnie Mouse is here, too. All right. And Minnie Mouse, uh, of course, yeah, like Casey was saying, you need to find it in its special freezer because it's colder than normal. It's single serve, comes with its own spoon. You can find it in 7-Eleven and Wawa's, so make sure you grab some today. We don't have, we're don't we not going to be sampling any flavors with us this morning. We'll no, get back what? next Ma- week and do that. Massive hit at the birthday party yesterday. Absolutely. All right. So I got a couple of connoisseur stories, and we will be playing some of the movie clips, too. Um, you know what? In fact... Let's lead off with that, okay? All right. Yeah. Uh, Jason, if you would do me a favor, and we're going to give away a prize case. You know what prizes Gaffigan we have? Gaffigan tickets. All right, tickets to see Jim Gaffigan. And hang on, I have that info yeah. Last bit one. right here. The Barely Alive Tour, Thursday, December 12th at the Met. Tickets go on sale today, by the way, at 10 a.m. Uh, so, Jason, do me a favor. Just play one of the clips. Anyone, go ahead. Ode to Ice Cream by Veda Saltonfuss. I like ice cream a whole lot. It tastes good when days are hot. On a cone or in a dish, this would be my only wish. Vanilla, chocolate, or Rocky Road, even with pie, a la mode. All right. 215-263-WMMR. I don't know what it's movie the third that's one from. down. Okay, thank you. All right, so, uh, by the way, these all, Marissa tried to grab clips that had some kind of a snow themed to them nice. or, or ski themed to them. So call if you know the answer. All right, here is our first kind of sore story, and this is one uh, I'm going to do a little bit off the beaten path. So I think it was last week I told you guys about this product uh, that is called uh, The Whole Shebang. Yes, um, and I got an email from Tim and Cherry Hill, and he said uh, the, the whole shebang, by the way, was a product that was made. There, they were uh, potato chips. They were served only in prisons, and they became so popular amongst prisoners that when these guys would get out, they'd try to search high and low to find the product. And eventually, the whole shebang made them available for order for the public to, to get. And I got this email from Tim, and he said, uh, hey, I'd like to thank the whole President and Steve show uh, for all the things you do. And he, he you know, gives us some great compliments in this. But he goes, the reason for this message uh, is a recent segment on your show. Uh, it was a bit on, uh, sent me on a bit of a mission and I thought I'd offer you fine folks some of the results of my work. And he tells, talks about the prison chips, the whole shebang. He said, I had a couple of strategies available to obtain them, but rather than the obvious option of committing a felony in order to allow the government to place me within the proximity of the chips at no cost to myself, I instead opted to try for an online purchase. As it turns out, the chips are fairly easy to find online. But most listings are wildly expensive, so I balked. And then I discovered that the manufacturer sells them direct to the consumer at a decent price, but you have to buy a minimum of a dozen bags. <laughs> he said, you can see where this is going. Yes, I'm the idiot who won't pay $12 to try a bag of a new snack, but uh, it will make me spend $36 to buy a dozen of them, oh and I'll dump my cash right in there. Basically, my mind was al- al- aglow with... Whirling transient nodes of thought careening through a cosmic vapor of inter- of invention. And a dozen bag of chips later, here we are. So I thought I'd share the love and send some bags to the people who introduced me to these tasty snacks. I hope you enjoy them. Thanks for all you do. That's from Tim in Cherry Hill. So these are the highly coveted prison chips. Have you sampled any yet? I have not. And I have a fresh bag right here. Let's do it. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to pass them down the line. By the way, if you ever end up in prison, this could be your favorite snack food. Oh, they smell good. Do they, do, they have, uh, do they have that stay out of the prison shower smell? No, they have a, a vinegar and uh, salt Ooh, and vinegar oh, smell. I'm a fan. So I'm, I'm a big fan of salt and vinegar chips. So yeah. uh, Casey's taking... <laughs> Preston, this would probably go good with a nice toilet wine. Mm. <laughs> how many, oh, how many did she take, Case? Dude, these are good. Yo, these are business. really, really good. Wow. All right. I'm gonna... Kathy, a shiv, some toilet wine. You've got a great night. I taste... Uh, Salt and vinegar and a little bit of barbecue. How about remorse? Oh, no, no remorse. Thank you. No. Mm. Oh, yeah. I taste somebody saying worth it. Mm-hmm. That's really good. 
Mm. I'm impressed. Yeah. Salt and vinegar and barbecue. Yeah, I would yeah. I would You're buy right. those without question. I wow. like the uh, the texture as well. I'm because I was worried that these wow. were kettle cooked. I'm they are good. A, I'm not a kettle cook fan. No, they're and kind Casey, of like, you can order. They have a uh, they have some um, charcuterie precedent. It's served on a parole board. <laughs> um, they uh, they kind of have the texture of the classic Lay's yeah. of the regular classic Lay's potato chips. So I'm impressed. And they're not really make, good. They don't make the mistake that a lot of um, salt and vinegar do. Too much vinegar. That's fantastic. All right, Tim and Cherry Hill, thank Yay! you for the whole shebang. Appreciate that. We right. love prison food. We'll go to the phones, and we'll see if somebody knows the movie clip. And you know what? We don't, we're not going to play it again. We'll just uh, have you uh, answer the question. So I am going to go to Nina on our phone line. Hi, Nina. Good morning. Hi. Nina, can you hear me? Hello? Hi, Nina. You're on the air. Hi. Hi. All right, Nina, what movie is that clip from? My Girl. That is correct. Yeah. That's correct. Hang on. We're going to give you tickets to see Jim Gaffigan, Barely Alive, tour Thursday, December 12th. Tickets go on sale this morning. The show is at the Met Philadelphia. Let's play another clip. So, Jason, whatever next one you want to hit, go for it. Oh, I know it sucks because I'm ruining it. This is the best vanilla latte I have ever had in my entire life. You can actually taste the vanilla beans that these... I don't like the coffee. All right, 215-263-WMMR. Call if you know the answer, and we will get our order up and go to the next story while you are calling in. So I was saving this story uh, for today, and I'm glad that I did because there has been an update to it. Uh, there was a story that came out earlier in the week that Wendy's was going to try out surge pricing, yeah. which meant that they were going to change the prices that would fluctuate based on time, location, and demand. Kind of like what Ubers and Lyft does. Exactly. Depending on how much traffic there is or where you're going, they will change the rates. And so Wendy said that they were going to try this out and it was a full plan and a update to that is they are not going to hey, go figure. They are instead going to charge you based on your religion. No, they are not going to do that. <laughs> Uh, CEO earlier this week, Kirk Tanner, discussed the plans for, quote, dynamic pricing, which caused many to suspect that Wendy's would charge more for burgers and fries throughout the day when the demand was higher. This is similar to Uber surge pricing, like I said. Now, uh, by the way, the Uber surge pricing has never been popular. Uh, Wendy's statement suggests that this was, quote, misconstrued. Uh, they had said uh, one initiative is digital menu boards, which are being added to the uh, U.S. company-operated restaurants. The statement said, uh, we said these menu boards would give us more flexibility to yeah. change the display of featured items. And they're saying that people kind of took that the wrong no, we way. No, we correctly strewed it. Oh, so, uh, yeah, it's interesting. I, one time I was, I was in line at a Wendy's, and there was a woman in front of me, and she was complaining about the prices. Now, this woman... Let me first by, start by saying she was clearly like a drug addict or something okay. like that. But she she was really getting angry about the fact that she only had a certain amount of money and she should be able to buy, right. you know, A, B, and C with this. And they're sitting there going, no, you right. can't. This is what the price is. And I felt like saying, you do realize that they change the prices from time to time. Yeah. Products will increase in, in what they cost from time to time. It does happen. She you know? said, you know what? You're right. I'm going to stop using. Yeah, and I should have, <laughs> and I didn't, and it probably would have. You could have changed a life. Probably would have turned her life around, but. You know what this makes me think of, though, Preston? During, uh, during uh, the shutdown and everything like that, we kept talking on air. Those drive through lines at Wendy's, and we're all going, why Wendy's, were huge. Yeah. So maybe that should spur them on to consider this. Mm, possibly. So, all right, we will see if someone knows the answer to the movie clip that we played. What movie is that mo food clip from, <laughs> food or drink clip from? And we will go to Jonathan and see if we can get an answer. Hey, Jonathan, good morning. Good morning. All right, Jonathan, what movie, please? That answer is Alcohol, baby. Alcohol, yeah. yeah. Don't know that movie at what all. It? What movie? Out Cold skiing movie. Out Cold? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. these are all skiing movies, like My Girl. My no, it was... <laughs> 
All right, I see, honestly, <laughs> like when we played My Girl, I'm like, what skiing scene happened? I don't, see, I don't he know. can't ski without his glasses. I know Marissa told me it uh, the other day, and I, I, it, it doesn't matter. It's a movie he clip. It's food. All right, so we're going to give her uh, him a... See, bear, he tick, says, yeah. Tickets to, tickets to Jim Gaffigan, Barely Alive Tour, Thursday, December 12th at the Met. Tickets go on sale 10 a.m. today. I'm just going to do one more story, or actually one more movie clip and one more story, and then we'll wrap it up. All right, Jason, next movie clip, please. In honor of our special guest, I've created dinner mondu. First, we have French fries and French dressing and French bread <laughs> and to drink. Ta da! <laughs> Peru. All right, what movie is that from? That's definitely a skiing movie, that by the way. That is a skiing movie. 215-263-WMMR. All right, order up. One more story, and then we're done with the connoisseur. Um, Panera is revamping its menu this April. The biggest menu change in the brand's history will include nine new items and updates to classics. Several new entrees will cost $10 or less. Fans can also expect to see more generous servings of chicken and steak in salads and sandwiches. By the way, there's the Panera right here in town. Oh, there is, yes. Wow. New menu makes its uh, nationwide debut starting April 4th. All right, I lied. I'm going to do one more story. Oh, yeah. You didn't like that? Well, no, I did, but it's kind of short, and I, and I did want to get to this one because I don't know if we'll have a chance to or not, but... This was interesting. Uh, Kellogg's CEO, Gary Pilnick, yeah. is facing criticism after suggesting that consumers facing financial strain should consider having cereal for dinner so, as a more affordable option. This is his let them eat cake. <laughs> so, totally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, totally. I mean, come on. Have cereal. Uh, Pilnick. Hey, and bugs are great. Mention the affordable. <laughs> And free. Free. The free bugs. The affordability of cereal. My dog eats grass. And how it could be a cost-effective choice for families. However, this advice has been met with backlash on social media, with many finding it insensitive, especially considering the rising costs of groceries. How about prison chips? Uh, and by the way, <laughs> cereal is not cheap. No. 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 It, no. How much, no. Is, how much no. was the Snoop no. Dogg cereal? Oh, that was cheap. That yeah. was like 99 cents. That, that was cheap That cereal. was 99 cents. Or like Malto meal press. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, consumers have expressed frustration at the increased prices of everyday foods, including cereals. How and, about sand? And the comments from the CEO are seen by some as tone deaf. Despite Pilnick's assertion that the suggestion is well received, social media reactions indicate a negative response to the campaign. Well, I, I will say this. When I do have cereal for dinner, uh, I like to have uh, Cheerios as the main course, uh, sometimes with uh, bananas, sometimes with strawberries, and then I will have a cereal dessert. You'll have cereal dessert uh -huh. with cereal as the main? Uh -huh. So yeah. do tell, what ends up being the cereal dessert? Lately, Golden Grahams. Golden Grahams. So I, if I'm having cereal for dinner, it is the everything. It, because I consider That's it kind of, of a dessert. All right. Yeah, because it's the everything. Like I'm not gonna have. I'm gonna have oh, like okay. a, a starter cereal yeah. salad. That's appetizer yeah, meal yeah, yeah. and right. dessert. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All I mean, rolled it, into it's one. It's all in one. Casey's eating chips off his pants. Yeah. No, I'm not. <laughs> Only because they ended up on the floor. So. Now, I may remind you that a a movie gave us cereal for dinner uh, in Silver Linings Playbook. Yes, Remember, it yeah. goes to the Lanark Diner and has Raisin Bran. That's right. For, oh my for God. dinner, were you Raisin Bran, folks? Big time. I love Raisin Bran. I loved oh, Raisin Bran. Kept you regular. Yeah, Nick loves raisins. I do. I have He's a wearing a shirt. Yeah, yeah. actually, yeah. from the shirt from the movie. How timely! Yeah. I know. Um, also, I'm not offended by what this guy said, and I don't necessarily even think he's tone deaf. I mean, he's the CEO of Kellogg's, and Casey. he's like, hey, how about you eat it all day? And You know what I mean? Like, Casey, do you know how he, he said it? He, his limo pulled up alongside <laughs> a homeless encampment, and he said, hey, guys, yeah. no need to be living in tents. You'll save money. Yeah. And uh, if you just eat cereal, oh, it, see, seemed, it seemed tone deaf. Yeah, okay. Well, I didn't understand. I didn't know the context. Yeah. Now that you say that. And then he lit one of them on fire. Oh. All right. We're going to go to our caller and see if they know what movie that is from. And we have Steve on the line. Hi, Steve. Good morning. Morning. Hey, Steve. All right. What movie was that clip from, please, sir? It's uh, Better Off Dead. Of course yeah. it is. One of these snow movies. I want to point out that Nick is wearing a shirt that says, You Like Raisins on it. <laughs> and it's a picture of the mom for Better Off Dead uh, holding up 
the dinner with the raisins. I love it. Man. A listener Why, look, gave me this, and I, I wish I remembered the listener's name, uh, but thank you for that present, or this present. It's I fantastic. It Lane Meyer, maybe? <laughs> Lane Meyer, yeah. Lane Meyer. Yeah. By the way, you remember the mom actually was the young girl in the John Wayne True Grit. She was. That is correct. All right, and that is it for the connoisseur. So thank you very much for allowing me to go through all of that. Uh, we're doing our best to stay a bit on time if we can for Cardboard Classic because we'd like to begin this whole thing around 10-ish. It seems to make the most sense, and it could not be. I mean, beautiful sunny day. Might even need sunblock today, man. Uh, yes. Definitely. Gonna I, I gave myself a uh, Brazilian wax last night just in case. Just in case. All right. Let us take a quick break and come back in a moment with some more of the Cardboard Classic as we are live at Montage Mountain and Lodge. Stay with us. We'll be back in a second. Which is just MMR. Light. All right. Thank you very much, Kath. Uh, I want to do a couple of shout outs, a couple of emails I want to read. Then we want to get a story from Nick. And then we might do the junk drawer. I just want to lay this out so we all know where we're headed to. Well, you got it, bro. Uh, so I got this one. It says, hey, good morning. It. Hey, my buddy Matt Cotton is going to be a Cardboard Classic uh, with his wife and 11 friends. They are not participating, but they know one of the crew and the Wawa sled. Uh-huh. Can you give them a real juicy shout out for me? Keep it in nooch and I'll be listening. Can't wait to hear all the festivities. Thank you. That is from High. Heidi Schumacher. So here is a chart, and thank you. And then this one says, Dear Preston, Friday, March 1st, is my five-year wedding anniversary to my darling wife, Ashley. It's been a wild ride along the way. We're grateful for you guys for letting us get married at the Cardboard Classic in 2019. Oh, wow. It was an epic day from Casey's creepy fur coat <laughs> To Marissa almost dropping the rings to the whole sled crashing at the bottom of the hill without <laughs> us right. on it. That's right. It was a really unforgettable day. We have even had the privilege of winning the very first epic fail trophy. And I've done every single cardboard classic since whenever Liberty One was. Was that 2008, maybe? Oh, man, that's going way back. It truly is my favorite day of the year. And this year, I am in the fastest sled category. So if you could read this and wish my wife a happy anniversary, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you guys for 15-plus years of amazing fun and friends. Uh, see you guys on Friday. That is from Brian and Ashley Bullock. So here's a uh-huh. chart. And, yeah, they indeed did a wear- wedding ceremony at the top of the hill. Yes. Right as they said, I do. They pushed the sled down. They came down on that whole thing. To echo something you just said, this has become so important. You know, certainly for us, we love it. And it wouldn't exist without the creativity and the effort that everyone puts into it. But this is an event for so many people. Uh, we, You know, we had that the horrible year with the blizzard, the, the baby being born, uh, you know, our, our friends who, uh, you know, they were trapped in the, in the pileup on the, the turnpike. Twins. Yeah. The twins. Uh, by the way, today is their sixth birthday. Their sixth birthday. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah, God, yeah. Six years ago. Wow. Yeah. They're going to be here. Are, Are they? they? Yeah, they awesome. As well. yep. Wonderful. All right, one last shout out. This has nothing to do with the Cardboard Classic, but I love this and I wanted to throw this in. It says, Yo, Pres- Presbo. Two years ago, I requested a shout out for my friend who was uh, helping me pack up in Philly to move to London. Well, two weeks later, on March 2nd, when I landed at Heathrow, I opened up Bumble while the plane was taxing to the gate. Amongst those handful of right and left swipes, I came across Mira, who swiped right on me during her lunch break because she, quote, was interested in meeting this American douchebag. Oh, my God. (laughs) And uh, he said it took a couple of weeks to finally meet up. But we vibed right from the start, and it's been a great two years since then. She came to Philly this past Thanksgiving, and as much as she enjoyed the trip, her favorite part was how big the produce is. <laughs> yeah, and he a sent, lot of the ladies like that. And he sent a picture of them in a grocery store together, uh, looking, and she's all excited looking That's at the hilarious. size of the produce. Uh, uh, requesting a shout-out because Mira's obsessed with and laughs at my totally normal amount of gas, she he says. Uh, anyway, I listen to you guys on the podcast for my part uh, for my part of my Philly fix. If you guys do another live broadcast in London for the Phillies Met series in June, I'll be there, and I'll bring the road cone guy. <laughs> and then he signs it, Fresh Foods, Local Flavors, Marshall. So that's from Marshall Fleming, and here's a shout-out, listening in London, and I hope you two guys are doing great. So Excellent. Um, so last night we all stayed, um, and we came down uh, in the evening and uh, stayed the night, obviously, because we get up ridiculously early for this event, for the Cardboard Classic. Um, I got a good night's sleep last night. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. 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 Nick did not. Aww. No, the hotel's really nice. It's the Hampton Inn, and uh, I, I was um, happy to get there last night, Preston. I think I arrived at like 5.30 or so, and, and uh, just wanted to like get settled, so I showered and shaved and got myself together. 
uh, ran. You didn't poo poo. Uh, not okay. when, not here. No. Okay, right. That was yet. Do you want more details about yeah, that? Yeah, I just think so. I'll tell you though. I didn't poop. Oh, you did? Uh, no, I didn't. No, sorry. I've, done, I've done it twice. I did. All right. So anyway, does this have? Oh, to back do, to the story. Does this have to do with you getting sleep? Was it in? It late? does. Okay. All right. Go so ahead. I, I, I uh, got dinner at uh, Chipotle. Came back to the hotel room. Went to bed at like uh, ten o'clock. Oh, that made you poo poo. Uh, <laughs> let's get past that part, Steve. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, okay. It must be the mountain air. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Preston, I uh, was watching Avengers and fell asleep, and I was like, I'm going to get a good night's sleep. And at 3 a.m., I was awoken uh, or awakened by strange sounds, and I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. And I hear, like, screaming, and uh, like sounds like something's clapping. And I'm like, what, what the hell is that? So I like kind of drift back asleep. About 3.15, I hear the sounds again, and I wake up. And uh, now I'm like, I'm pretty sure these are sex sounds. And so I, and now I can't fall back asleep. And the more I focus and the more that I listen and the more I, I think about what it is, I'm like, these are definitely sex sounds. So now my brain is like, where, <laughs> where are these sounds coming from? Uh-huh. Uh, it turns out uh, right next door to my room. Wow. wow. Uh, so, yeah, Casey, and it's that weird feeling of like, should I be hearing this? Uh, should I be, uh, am I a, a, you know, a peeping Tom or a listening Tom at this point? Is it, is it kind of pretty? Yes. Well, I don't, there's no, nothing you can no, do about No, 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 no. I mean, listen, you, you didn't have your ear up no. to the he wall. Did. The he did. He got a cup. He I, had it. I didn't have my ear initially, you know, but after a while, you're like, where is this coming from? And you start figuring, you know, like trying to tri- triangulate the sounds. And so um, here's what I did, Preston. I, <laughs> this isn't about. Got a glass of wine. About four. Yeah, I poured myself another glass yeah. of wine. Uh, kicked off my, my shoes. No, I open my door because I'm like, maybe it's coming from across the hall or down the hall or upstairs. Because listen, Kathy, it was loud. It was loud. Nick, what time is this? 4.15 at this point. I think we're all on the same floor. I was on the fourth not? floor. Yeah, yeah uh, I, was, floor. I was too. So <clears throat> that's what I was going to ask. A lot of times they will get these rooms in, in bulk and yeah. in, in, in blocks. Oh, so you think it's and someone from? I'll bet it's somebody we know. I, I want to know that and I don't want to know that because these people were going at it and listen. It's like point, animals. There was some serious ass slapping happening. Wow. The, uh, Any who's your daddy? Uh, I didn't hear a who's your daddy, but I heard both parties involved, the man and the woman, really enjoying themselves. Wow. Well, who did it sound like? Uh, it sounded like Eric Simon. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Eric. He's standing right there. It, I have no this idea. This is who, awesome. I, this is sick. Oh, it's Galper. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I thought maybe somebody in sales, sales department, Sex. they're at, a, they're at a, uh, another hotel. Ah, uh, the they would be there. Same hotel as us. So um, it was right next door, and when Preston, when I opened the door into the hallway, it was, uh, I go out in the hallway, and I was the second to last room on the left-hand side. I was in room 403. I was in 407. It wasn't you. Okay. Uh, so we were on the I same... was in 401. I was okay, in so 415. <laughs> it was... I was, I was in 205, by the way. No, I wasn't, I wasn't even, even on the fourth floor. I wasn't on the fourth floor either. Wait, but what I would have done is, why didn't you give, like, a little bang on the wall so they knew that you could hear you them? You want a throuple? Like, yeah. shush. I wanted to uh, see what? where it went. Yeah. I was yeah. curious as to what might Let happen them next. Finish. Hey, do you guys need a cuck? I mean, not for nothing, but, like, dude, you said you this started you started hearing at 3.15. 3.15, Casey. And then you said 4.15. Dude, no. they were going for an hour. They, That's drunken sex. There, there yeah. were several rounds, and so I left the hotel room at about 4.58, 4.59, and, and I made a point to look at my, clock, uh, my watch when I was leaving at the phone because I wanted to know, had they been going for nearly two hours at this point? So, Preston, I go out in the hallway at, from 4.03, and yes, Kathy, it was in room 401. Make the right, but before I make the right, I'm like, Leaning a little towards 401, and they were still going at it. And at this point, you still heard them when you they, left for work. Yes, yes, at five o'clock, That's they're still long. going at it. And uh, and now, but they were they were laughing. And so the, here's the last thing that I heard: uh, the girls say, "We're gonna need to change the sheets." Wow. What you actually wow. heard that? Wow. I heard her say it through the door, yeah. and then I was like, "I gotta go." This she is said, gross. I just took a dump. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have to change the sheet. It was Amber wow. Heard. Yeah. <laughs> Amber I Heard. Am, wow. So, and, and by the way, some of the salespeople were staying. Oh, really? The, yes. Okay. I, I was talking to somebody earlier, it so it would be somebody. It could was Calper. Yeah. Sheets are all screwed up. Um, so, <laughs> gotta get some Clorox. Are you are you certain that it wasn't porn? Oh, it was not porn, and I'll tell you. Okay. Why I know that because you were watching porn. Oh. <laughs> 
because the TV was on. Okay. I so could hear the TV in the background. These, I don't know if they were using it to drown out the noise, but... No to names? You point, didn't... To Kathy's point, you could knock on the wall, but you could also call down to the desk uh, and ask them to let them know. To go no. to call. Do you... I, I didn't want to disturb their good time. And you heard no, like, names? Nobody no used names. names or anything? No, and I was trying to, like, in a weird, pervy way to figure out if I could hear their voices or figure out... Who oh, they were Jackie. Their voices. Yeah. I mean, oh, listen, if, Jackie. if you know what room it's coming from, you can call them, right? Yes. Like, you just... Well, you... Uh, uh, no. Um, I don't know if you can still do room to room no, calls like you, you used to, Case. I think you have to know the, the yeah. name of the individual in the room. Staying yep. There. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you don't just type in 401 and hey, then, no, hey, I don't I think you probably do it to the people yeah. banging in the next yeah. room. And then yeah. you could say, hey, listen, I'm in room 413. You know, don't give away your room. Uh, no, Casey, I don't. I don't think you can do room to room calls anymore. Uh, um, but you can, like Steve said, you can call down to the front desk and they'll call and they'll they'll make that. I happen. think they would be glad. I mean, that's a service. It, huh. If you were being kept awake, Nick, I'm sure everyone around was as well. I was wondering if other people could hear it. Mm. Uh, Nick, so I woke up at probably like I don't know, maybe it was like an hour early, and I couldn't fall back to sleep because the uh, toilet was running. Something was wrong with the toilet, and I was like, oh my gosh, I am not getting a good night's sleep. I didn't think. Wait a second. <laughs> you really didn't get a good night. What sleep. room were you in? Uh -huh. 401, I told you. And did you bring your electric toothbrush? <laughs> wow. So would you want to know or would you not want to know? I would totally want to know. Absolutely. I don't want to watch. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I don't think I, I, if I personally heard it, no, I don't, I wouldn't want to know. I would actually, I would pay someone to sit outside the door and see who it was. Yeah. Does, any, does anyone's face look red in here? Well, I, that's what I'm kind of glancing around, see if, uh, if anybody might look like uh, culprits. Sheepish, no, they would have scurried out. Bill Burns just ran out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they sounded young for whatever that's worth. Oh, yeah, Pancake, did you stay last night? <laughs> you did? What, ro what room number? 401. 401. Oh, you're on, you're on two. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay, all right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe it's like we have, like, some crew me single crew members here. Like, yeah, totally. You yeah. Remember the oh, time? dude, our you crew members have hooked up. Oh, my yeah. God. Uh, uh, Keenan's. Yeah. There was a, there was oh, a basic yeah. orgy. Yeah. Do you remember the one time somebody was, uh, one, of the, one of the staff members was talking smack about... Uh, Cast members of the show. We, we don't yeah. have the name right, right next to Nick. Yeah. The only Nick. person he didn't talk crap about was me. Uh, there were thin walls. He was beating up on me. Uh, I know that. And uh, just he was he, and denied it to the very, very yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. And then finally admitted it, right? Yeah. Well, that, And that was an instance, Kathy, where there was a shared door. So, like, I could, I could quite easily hear everything that he was saying. And it was casual conversation. But it was like uh, I was with my ex-wife at the time, and she heard it as well. But last night, like I, I mean, and this morning, I, I had to go outside and put my ear against the door to <laughs> yeah. hear what With the glass? Yeah. Reaper. <laughs> yeah. Wow. No, I, I think you are, you are absolutely within your rights to call down to the desk or even to a knock on the door, on the wall, just to let them know I, they're being I a little bit. They were having a good time. I didn't want to interrupt it. Was there, like, headboard banging against the wall? I stuff didn't hear like that? Okay. I did right. hear ass slapping and... <laughs> Uh, and but here's the thing about me knowing who they are. If I found out who they were, I would always look at them differently for the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah. maybe you'd have greater respect for them. <laughs> well, or, well, yeah. I mean, for like a two-hour session, dude. It's okay, man. There's a picture of somebody that used to work at the radio station that hangs in the walls who was known to lick butts, <laughs> and I still think of that every single time you I see that it? picture. Yeah. Absolutely, that's a, that's a complete lie. <laughs> <laughs> that's an outlandish lie. Casey and I still do. All right, Casey, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Wait, it's and it's the yeah, oh, yeah, yes. sure. it is. yeah, 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 yeah. But we know both parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, one yeah, of I don't, might, one I, of them might be on the. Air. I don't mind knowing that at all. Okay, well, said, we've said enough now. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, Nick, I'm sorry that you had that experience. I guess. No, I mean, oh, I'm not sorry. That was great. Thank it you. Made, uh, hopefully, made for good radio. Yeah. All right, um, Kay, should we do a little bit of the junk drawer? You think I we, don't we have a little know. bit of time? I know we've. Yeah. Okay. Preston's cleaning out his junk drawer Getting things out of his junk drawer Finding stuff here in his junk drawer all right, we're going to dig something out and pass it along to you. Let's begin with, let me see. From the files of the junk drawer. I do have the files. A lot of people don't know I take that thing with me everywhere I go. Uh, yeah, we're going to go with uh, this one. Um, a recent survey of 2,000 worker working parents found that the average respondent 
relies on six people to help support their child's growth. The average respondent relies on six people yeah. to help with their child's growth. These are working working parents. They need okay. at least six people to lend a hand. Including themselves? When it comes to rate. Uh, I that's assume good, it's in addition to themselves. I think right? it's in addition, yeah. So for 46% of parents, uh, the child's grandparents are involved. Extended family like aunts, uncles, and cousins help contribute to a child's development, and only 8% of parents would include neighbors in their village. Can you cut back on that number if you feed them cereal for dinner? <laughs> ah, maybe. So we, uh, Rochelle and I had the um, situation where we had no family, yeah. none, not one single person uh, in our sphere because our, you our family. You had Gary at that time. Uh, no, and Gary would, hadn't come into our lives. Gary Lauer, no. Yeah, we relied heavily on both sides, you know, both sets of grandparents um, yep. and then a lot of family members as well. Does that and, set up a tricky dynamic, you guys, with, with the... Um, like who gets invited to be, you know, the group to, be to help? Used? Yeah, uh, to no, it's whoever is will, like willing to. You, I don't, they're not like, oh, I'll do it. Oh, well, not. you got yeah. Kath, Kathy and Dennis are both full time workers, yeah, yeah. So they need, they absolutely require people to be helping them out yeah. regularly. Right. Yeah. So they'll take whoever they can get. Gary, <laughs> yeah. uh, Steve, I would say any benefits out, outweigh any cons. Okay, like, if there's ever any awkwardness or whatever, you'll take the help with childcare. Uh, the Lightbridge Academy had surveyed, uh, survey also found that the average parent worries about child care six days a month, and 32% are concerned about <laughs> the quality. Right now, at this very yeah, moment, of I, child I, care. I, the kids I, out in the woods, they can find berries. I completely forgot that we were a little bit, uh, it was a longer distance to montage than Jack Frost, and so I timed it out wrong for when this is going to end cardboard okay. classic will end and i will get to jace's school so i told casey this morning i'm like i now need to figure out who's picking jace up from school oh so that hasn't been resolved yet no oh no somebody's got a funeral somebody's got the twins okay and, so yeah, all right gonna, either either steve hey. i'm gonna use your method of 100 miles an hour on no. my home or... kathy i have the solution okay Caller 13, 215 263 WMMR. We'll give you the address. Yeah. You get to pick, pick up, up Kathy's site. Hey, whoever was staying in room 401, they got a lot of yeah. energy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're probably sleeping. No, that's true. They may have worn themselves out last night. Uh, being a working parent is uh, difficult, obviously, so you need all the help that you can get. So that was uh, the results of that particular survey. All right, let me find out what else. I think I have another survey thingy. Nice, could be survey sent. Uh, I know, I probably should have. Yeah, that's a drop the ball. All right, so a Reddit user faced criticism for hiring a housekeeper to handle his share of the household chores, despite a 50-50 agreement with his girlfriend. Well, listen. <laughs> he's paying for it. If he's paying for it. I think I'm it's sure, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm yep. sure she has an issue if they're working like towards marriage or something, that that money could be better spent on other stuff, but... But they're yeah. not married, so, I mean, his money's his money. Yeah. Yep. Uh, while some supported the man, others highlighted communication issues and suggested joint hiring of a cleaner as a solution. I mean, he is sem he's just subletting his uh, responsibilities. And what if there's a particular act that she won't perform on and if he had to hire someone else? Right. Right. <laughs> so, by the way, so he, uh, the guy contributes 75% of the rent. Oh. And he hired a cleaner due to constant uh, complaints about his cleaning. The girlfriend later, she called no fair on that, Casey. Well, if he's 75% on the rent, I think he's uh, got a little latitude. I think he's got a whole lot yeah. of latitude for yeah. that. Absolutely. Um, the disagreement reflects differing perspectives on responsibilities in the relationship. Oh, shut up, woman. <laughs> <laughs> but I think if it's getting done, it's getting done. That's right. But there are some people that are, if, if you are not physically pulling the weight then they have an issue with that. You know what I mean? Those people are usually in the room next to Nick. <laughs> <laughs> they were pulling the weight. Like everybody was pulling the weight in that relationship. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of weight being slapped around. Wow. All right, let's do another one. Hang on a second here. Uh, all right, this was kind of weird. Uh, eerie banging sounds that briefly gave rescuers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, God, you've been thinking that. Uh -huh. Wrap it right back around. That gave uh, rescue teams hope of saving the Titan submersibles crew. Yes. And passengers have been released. So this is the one that was headed down to the Titanic and all those people died on because uh, it imploded. Uh, during a frantic and ultimately futile multi-day search for survivors, U.S. Coast Guard revealed that sonar devices had detected tapping sounds. You remember that? Yes. Uh, coming from the vast search zone in the North Atlantic Ocean. Uh, the Royal Canadian Air Force, which led the search and rescue operation, has now released audio, excuse me, of the rhythmic tapping sounds. 
and it's in a new documentary called Minute by Minute, The Titan Sub-Disaster. Um, and they really thought that it, that it sounded rhythmically enough. It was happening uh, in regular 30-minute intervals that they thought maybe there might have been a slight chance that they were, there were survivors. Sorry, but what? in hindsight, they're, they're like, no, no there's I no I watched way. this two-hour documentary. Uh, I think it was on ABC. And uh, they basically broke down all the stuff. They pretty much really knew that what had happened well in advance but of course they had to exhaust every yeah. possibility you got to confirm that and one of the things they said was one of the most glaring issues is the design of the vehicle itself which had kind of a tapered end to it yeah anything that goes down that is getting that much pressure from all sides benefits by either being a cube or being uh, uh you know a, uh, a, a a a ball right and so that alone and then the fact that they used composite material yeah uh, so Everyone was, apparently there was far more people than we were initially led to believe who were saying, this is a ticking time bomb. Yeah. 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 And uh, several people died in that whole thing, by the way. So, but uh, yeah, they've, they've released the sounds. Yes, Casey. Oh, no, no. Did you just I, admit you were in the room next door? No, uh, guys, <laughs> I, am, I am roasting right now. Well, yeah. your back is to the, you it have the is sun. the <laughs> worst. Oh, like, I, don't, I can't he has, sit here anymore. He has direct sunlight on his Why back. Over here, buddy. Yeah, I know, right? Nick, uh, you're not going to use the same joke on Casey as you did on me this morning? I came. I walked in. I was so hot this morning. I was like, I am sweating. Are you hot or is it just me? And what? That's menopause. Hey. Oh, <laughs> it could be. I'm a little bit older than you. All right. Well, I tell you what, Case. In yeah. uh, in, in, in in honor, concern <laughs> in honor of that, and in concern out of concern for you, we can go ahead and take a break. Okay, thank and you. We can wrap up the junk drawer. So, uh, we're gonna close it up. Lock the door. Get in the room next to Nick. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Kyle, for our junk drawer jingle. And he's yeah. out running around with our friends at Newman University, and uh, they're they're filming today. And uh, we've got we're going to get great footage of this by the time when we're done with the cardboard classic. Uh, so we're excited to get it underway. By the way, our friends at Tito's Handmade Vodka have uh, have made a trophy. Look at that for the best Tito's sled. I love that. Isn't that awesome? It is a golden mug. Copper. It's copper. Is yeah. it copper? So it's, it's made of copper. copper. If you make a um, Moscow mule, for example, yep. you use Tito's, the best way to serve it is in a copper That's mug. brilliant. I love it. So uh, we're going to award that, and we yeah, also have our, our favorite fail, uh, fastest sled, and, of course, the best design. And apparently our judges are starting to make the rounds to get out there and get an idea of who's going to walk away the winner this year. But uh, the winner actually is you, if you can be here, because you get to witness this stuff. Yeah. And it is so much fun, and we're excited for it. So uh, we're doing our best to stay on time, so that's why something like the Bizarre File is going to come up a lot earlier than usual when we return. So we'll take a quick break. We'll come back with that. Pierre Robert is going to be broadcasting when we're done. So will Brett Porsche and Jackie Bam Bam is here. Pam, yeah. Take the whole crew. We'll be back in a moment. Stay with us for the Cardboard Classic. Down there and that's somewhere. your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right, got my breath back now. Good to go. That was damn good. Ready to go. We stepped outside to take a, a picture. Uh, Casey saw a sign and a little spot that we thought would make uh, for a good photo, and we need good photos. So we went out there and we took a picture. It was a better idea than mine. I wanted to go down to the industrial complex in uh, Scranton proper yeah. and take a picture during the break. <laughs> right. <laughs> In our special outfits we were in. Yeah. We did. We, and we have our full jumpsuits on. And what, what are they called? Tipsy Elves. Tipsy Elves. And, uh, yeah, you'll see, you'll see plenty of pictures of that a little later on. All right. So we have Bizarre File stories to share. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now, Jason. Now, Bizarre. WMMR presents Bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre, Bizarre File. All right, let's get right into the stories. We'll begin with this one. A bishop has rebuked comments made by priests on their YouTube channel about praying for Pope Francis to die as soon as possible. Wow, he's not a company guy, is he? Uh, Archbishop Francisco Cerro Chavez of Toledo. That's fun to say. Posted a statement on uh, the Archdiocese website saying that it rejected the comments and warned that they may take corrective measures without elaborating. So was there... That's fun to say. I'm sorry. Uh, what was the what was what did he fully say? Was that it? I'll I'll do a specific. I'll, I'll give you the exact quote. But the statement follows an episode of a program on YouTube called the uh, Sacristy of the Vendi. It's an offshoot of Mr. Beast. It's a counter-revolutionary <laughs> priestly gathering, and they had it earlier this month. In it, 
a Toledo priest makes an introductory salute saying, I also pray a lot for the Pope so that he can go to heaven as soon as possible. Hey, um, if you don't allow us to eat meat on Friday, I'd hate to have to. I'd hate for you to go to heaven prematurely. A, another priest expressed his support for this while the conversation group, which involves six Spanish-speaking priests from different countries, laughed over the comments. Uh, the group then went on to discuss different uh, religious, social, and political issues, mostly from a conservative point of view. In his statement, Chavez says that he expressed his profound rejection of any manifestation of dissatis uh, disaffection toward the person and ministries of the Holy Father, adding that it has told the priests that they should seek forgiveness. Now, I'm not a member of the clergy, but I always thought you were supposed to kind of Support the Pope. Yeah, the statement says the Archbishop, uh, Archbishop, Archbishopric is not responsible for or represented by the statements made by the priests in the internet program. In a message, uh, the uh, sacristy of the Vendi group apologized, saying, We are sorry for the unfortunate comment, said in a humorous tone yeah. about praying for the Pope to go to heaven as soon as That's possible. That's very funny. Why don't you shut your blowhole? It is a comment in bad t uh, taste, and although it does not express wishes for the death of the Pope, as some media have maliciously spread, we understand that it could be understood that way. I wonder if there's, like, office-type sniping at the Vatican. Yeah, like, maybe. Like, oh, he's always wearing white. <laughs> A five-year-old girl with autism, this is a good story, was uh, miraculously rescued by Florida deputies using infrared technology because she had wandered into swampy woodlands. I mean, like, into scary territory. Like, the, miraculous that she wasn't taken out by a, uh, an alligator. Yeah, uh, it was shortly after 5 p.m. The sheriff's office aviation unit was called in to help with a missing persons report. Uh, the person was a five-year-old little girl who had wandered away from her Florida home uh, using thermal imaging technology. The aviation unit was able to locate the child in under an hour. Uh, thermal camera footage showed the little girl walking through the wooded area, leading deputies to her location. Uh, body cam footage of the rescue shows the touching moment that the police finally found her. Uh, one of the deputies says with his arms uh, outstretched, uh, saying, come here, sweetheart, you know, we, we were looking for you. Is that not the, the oh, sweetest footage? It's wonderful. This, this poor little girl, but this, this, uh, this police officer, it's just a great moment. Yeah, the little girl was found with no reported injuries before being returned to the family. But, you know, thank goodness uh, those infrared uh, drones yeah. uh, can be used for stuff like that. You know what they're that. doing, now? They're putting them in egg corns. And they're <laughs> in acorns. Uh, a school bus driver is speaking out after she was assaulted by a student on her afternoon route. The attack was caught on surveillance. Uh, driver Laura Owens loves her job because of the kids, and she serves as safe uh, and safely uh, gets them where they need to go. And she does it with pride, she says. But video captures a female student coming up behind Owen on an afternoon stop. Owen said she initially asked that the student's boyfriend get off of the stop for moving around in the aisle, standing up, and putting safety in jeopardy. Uh, the video shows the female student put a phone with who she says is her mother on the line up to the driver as Owen pleads for her not to. Owen then is heard on the surveillance repeating the threats that she hears on the phone that this person, quote, is going to kill her. This is the mother. This is the mother speaking. Uh, before asking, That's my mom. Before asking the female student to exit the bus. Um, and she had said, we only implement the bus safety that we are instructed to do per district policy and nothing more than that. And then the girl apparently uh, went back to her seat, seat and then she comes back and she starts physically assaulting the bus driver. While, while the bus is underway? Uh, that I don't know. Right. Uh, Owen did suffer a concussion and now battles uh, residual and constant ringing in her ears, headaches and neck pain and a lot of emotional trauma as well. So she is seeking some compensation for that. Letitia Bishop spent $1,000 for one Subway sandwich last month. <laughs> this was at a Columbus... Well, it's that extra meat, right? Uh, Columbus, Ohio location. Yeah, the double meat option. The double meat option cranks uh, it up to a grand. Bishop was charged $1,021.50 in total for three sandwiches. Uh, footlongs typically cost between $6.50 and $12. It's unclear why one of the sandwiches was so costly. It was 14 inches. Uh, Bishop has attempted to contact Subway but says that she hasn't been able to get a hold of a live person. Unfortunately, the large chain has left her unable to pay for necessities. She said, I couldn't get groceries at one point because my account was negative. So they better straighten that up right away. An American musician broke a Guinness World Record at the soft opening of a renovated Iowa venue playing his guitar while hooked up to 81 amplifiers. 
Uh, John Locker played through the 81 amps at the Val Air Ballroom in West Des Moines on Sunday as part of the live music venue soft opening following a $15 million renovation project. Um, Locker broke the previous record of 50 amplifiers played through at the same time before a crowd of hundreds of onlookers. We have the audio of the first strum, Preston. Okay. <laughs> Uh, he said, this is more of a party trick than anything. This is not something you're ever going to use in the real world. Uh, he was the first musician, by the way, to take uh, the stage following a 13-month renovation project. One last story. Yeah. All right. An 83-year-old man in prison for more than three decades for a string of 1980s bank robberies is back behind bars. Donald Doc Bennett once dubbed by the FBI as the leaping bandit for <laughs> jumping over counters in his younger days during bank robberies, was arrested hours after allegedly holding up a Chase Bank in Illinois on Valentine's Day with an accomplice identified as 55-year-old Edward Binnert. Both Bennett and Binnert are both charged with a home robbery. Uh, Bennett was released from prison in 2020, having served 31 years wow. of a 50-year sentence after being convicted in 1989 of multiple bank robberies committed in Chicago, and he did it again. It's a, a, it's the, a, a career criminal. What are you going to do? Yeah, following his and arrest. And he can jump. Uh, Bennett reportedly as well. confessed to FBI investigators that he was involved in the robbery at the Chase Branch. Bennett told investigators that he first met Bennett in 2006 while they were both serving time in a federal penitentiary in Michigan. You make friends. You make friends. but uh, and um, they, they, Often they have very good potato chips. But they, they stole uh, from several different banks, and then and once they got out of prison, they went and did it again. They're headed back in, of course. Crazy. And there you go. That is what I have in the bizarre file for you this morning. All right. We are here at Cardboard Classic. We're at Montage Mountain. We are in the lodge. There's a few people having some beverages and relaxing and getting their self set. We just stepped outside uh, to uh, take some pictures, and the crowds are starting to get in place. They're along the route, and we'll probably be heading out there in the next 20, 25 minutes or so. Oh, yeah, how beautiful is it outside? It's wonderful. It's amazing. Nice and sunny, and it's it's chilly. It's cold, obviously, but it's not windy, well, which is fantastic. And you said it's not pat pat no, I didn't. No, I didn't feel like pat pat. Uh, not where we were walking, anyway. But it is certainly snow. I think it's. I think they're good conditions. These are yeah. great conditions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And obviously, uh, oh, I just. Sorry, the twins are here. Uh, the ones that were born on uh, cardboard class six years. Oh, ago. you just saw them walk in. I, I, I just okay. Got distracted. Oh. Sorry about that. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, yeah. But with the weather conditions earlier this week, uh, you know. I, I, it's it's perfect out yeah, there. It looks yeah, nice. Yep. Yeah. And the mountains open for skiing, obviously. And if you have a lift ticket, you can go to Mountain Fest, which of course uh, Collective Soul is the headliner today, and they're going to be going on stage. I think five thirty is, is they, the, the, the techs were check, checking the equipment as we were out there. It sounds good. Yep. The uh, the sound system it's it's big. It's yeah. loud. Yes. It's awesome. And uh, and maybe I don't know if we're going to have Ed Roland from. Uh, Collective soul buy or not, maybe Pierre will. He'll be on the air later yeah, on, so possible. he can stop in and hang out with Pierre and watch some of the stuff. That'd be fantastic. So we'll see it how it all rolls out. All right, so we should take a break, come back in a second, and we'll get to lesson question, trash, and music news. And we're getting that much closer to Cardboard Classic 2024 at Montage Mountain. We'll be right back. Cardboard <laughs> Classic on 93.3 WMMR. Now, here's Preston and Steve. Uh, 9.51. We're getting closer to this cardboard classic thing getting underway. This fine Friday morning montage mountain. Um, the Cardboard Classic 2024 presented by our friends at Springfield Mitsubishi and Volkswagen of Springfield. A special thank you to Newman University helping out as always. And the... Um, Slocum Hollow Bar and Restaurant at Montage Mountain, which is kind of the area that we are in uh, right now broadcasting live from. So many people uh, part of this event, and we'll do uh, the diligence of uh, thanking everybody in their entirety when we do recap it next week, uh, which we, of course, will get to. And uh, follow us along on social media uh, to see what's going on uh, throughout the course of the day, and uh, you'll get a peek at some of these amazing uh, creations that these people have brought out here. And, and we hear that the uh, the level has stepped up quite a bit as That's far the as word. Uh, the craftsmanship and creativity. So, And uh, mind you, we were properly blown away in years past, so I yeah. can only imagine what we're going to see here. Absolutely. A couple more things to do. Pierre's going to be along shortly, but uh, we have uh, lesson question, trash, and music news. Uh, Nick, do you have a 
Oh, lesson yeah. question for today, which, by the way, we are going to give away as a prize a pair of tickets as MMR Rocks Kings of Leon, Monday, September 23rd at The Man. Which legendary writer once penned a script for Saved by the Bell? <laughs> which legendary writer once penned a script for Saved by the Bell? For Saved by the Bell. 215-263-WMMR. It was about 640 this morning. All right. If you were listening then and you know the answer, call now because we got the prize for you. And while you are calling, we will do the trash. So let's go for it. The trash business is a gold mine. 93.3 WMMR with Preston and Steve's Hollywood Trash. Brought to you by Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds since 1987. Get free seeding every year. Call 800 free seed now. Steve, what's going on? Well, controversial fraudster Jesse Smollett has completed a five month outpatient substance abuse program. Smollett says he's learned that only by being open and honest can you get people to believe your lies. Uh, Kim Kardashian is upset that Kanye West communicates his issues with her parenting over social media. West responded saying it's not like he has some sort of magical device that lets him talk directly to people miles away. And finally, Oprah is parting ways with Weight Watchers after admitting her significant weight loss was due to Ozempic. Oprah says she still believes in Weight Watchers as an effective way to earn money something else to lose weight. <laughs> and that's your Hollywood track. All right, thank you, Steve. And by the way, we're going we're gonna to hold off on music news for a minute because we have a last-second special guest we're going to welcome everybody. Hang on for that. We'll get to that in a moment. But we are looking for an answer to... Uh, Nick, what was the question again? Which legendary writer once penned a script for the sitcom Saved by the Bell? Now, I, even though I'm on this show, do not remember the answer to the question. All right. <laughs> so, Nick, you tell this person if they are incorrect or not. I will go to Drew. Hi, Drew. You're on the air. Good morning, bud. How could you stop? How could you stop? All right, Drew. What legendary author once wrote an episode for Saved by the Bell? Stephen King. What did he say? He said Stephen King. No, that's not right. No, incorrect. Stephen King? No. Not Stephen King either. Joey King? And uh, there's nobody else on hold right now. So it doesn't matter. You know why? Casey, you got any music over there? Hit it, baby. Ladies and gentlemen. Bill Weston, man about town. His triumphant return to WMMR is happening. Cardboard Classic, come around this way. Oh, my God. I had hoped he would make good on his offer to come up here, and he did. I saw the silver pony come prancing in. Uh, Bill! Oh, my God. I told you, this is my favorite event of the year. Yeah. I saw Casey in the gym yesterday. He says, you're coming up? And I'm going, I'm thinking about it. And I said, well, I set my alarm this morning for the first time in two months. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I hit the, the thing, and it said 6.30, and, which is my typical time when it's last year. And I go, okay, I'll be out the door by 7. I'll be up here by 9. Yeah. Perfect. And what a great day. It, it's yeah. an easy the break. sleds are unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Have you just talking to everybody out there. There's just so much... Joy, yeah. it's great. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. You didn't, mo- you didn't take your bike up here, did you? No. you yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. No. Uh, by the way, the man who the baton was passed to is standing right next to him, Chuck D'Amico. Yeah. Hey, I'm really glad Bill's here on time. By the way. <laughs> yeah. Is that my song? That's your song. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Thank Chuck you. has his own. Because uh, Pierre's not here. Bill's gonna do middays. <laughs> oh my God. Is that it? I have, I have heard that that Pierre is on the way. On his way. That's all that I know. I don't know but how. I think- Far I along the way. I thought he was here and napping in a parking lot. Oh, no, really? no, no, no. He no? has just left Ballot Kenwood, but he's on his way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bill, some things never change. <laughs> it's funny, though, walking out amongst the sleds and seeing them, some of dubious construction. I'm going, <laughs> not my problem. We get yeah. sued today. <laughs> <laughs> it's all us, <laughs> man. Judging this thing has got to be the hardest thing I've ever done in my career. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's incredible out there. This. The work by the listeners is just amazing. The designs are uh, um, just out of this world. I I just couldn't believe what I was looking at. Couldn't believe it. The craftsmanship, it blows us away. Again, pressing that picture of the Wawa. I can't wait to see that friggin' thing. I know, and I hope they make it down the hill. That's that's the other thing. You'll see this construction. It looks amazing, but is it sturdy enough? Is it is it seaworthy per se? And then we get out there and then we find out, you know, so it's exciting. The guy who built the roller coaster sled? Yeah, it's Bob Havens, yes. He has a picture on the back of each seat in the roller coaster 
of like every conceivable person you've ever seen working at one ballot. <laughs> like Connor and Wow. I'm on there. You're on there? Sitting next to Rodney and Chuck. Marcus, Gary Lauer. <laughs> I love it. So, it's crazy. Bill, I saw you yesterday, and you you were kind of you were on the fence about coming yesterday. Did did I have any sway over you making it here? Yeah, you did. I did. You did. I was kind of on the fence. So proud. And I was like, well, because I should listen, I, I mean, I, I tried to give him the most sincere eyes and the most sincere like like, 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 a, like a puppy face. I I, I don't you know. Looked into but, your soul. Like I, I really did. The issue I, was yeah. though. He was able to get into a room next to Nick. Yeah. <laughs> I heard about that guy. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. not your problem anymore either. Oh, my gosh. And thank God when I saw Casey at the gym yesterday in the locker room, we both had our clothes yeah. on. Yeah. I, I was sitting there. I was like, can you leave now? Because I need to get Nick. Yeah. Did you by any chance hear the show yesterday? I did. I, had, I was tuning in. I turned on the YouTube screen, and I said, yeah. I tweeted on the YouTube uh, chat thing, I hope that thing takes a big bovine <laughs> ball movement right in the studio, and then Chuck can clean it up. Yeah. Are you Julie, Julie Jerkoff? On that? <laughs> Julie Jerkoff. On that. So with, with the cow in the studio yesterday, it was years and years and years ago. It was when it might have been our first year at MMR when we had Kathy's birthday party, and we bought a horse up. Bill nearly, Bill had a conniption. It yep. was yep. three months into our time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so we were missing you. We were thinking about you yesterday, Bill. I just wanted to know the security guy down on the first floor when they walked that cow into the elevator. <laughs> uh, amongst everything. By yeah. the way, there were tarps down in honor of you. So yes. yeah, it was all yes. good. That. Well, we're super glad you made it, man. What a great event. Congratulations on an amazing cardboard classic. Thank yeah, you. You guys are the best. Yeah, yeah we'll uh, we'll have we gotta get you on the mic while we're out there on the hill. So make yeah. sure you stay close. All right, Bill West and Man about awesome. Town. That is so He's cool. the real deal. Uh, I love the fact that he came out. All right, uh, let us do hang on a second. All right, let me hang on. Let me let me go to the phones. We're still looking for an All answer right. to this which, question. Which legendary writer once penned a script for the sitcom Saved by the Bell? Okay, we'll go. We'll go to Evan. See if he knows. Hey, Evan. Good morning. Evan, are you there? All right, I'm going to put Evan on hold, and we're just going to give him the prize. That's what we're going to do. Evan, there you go. What was the answer? David Mamet. David Mamet. Okay, he's, he's right. He said Sam Bobbitt, so that's pretty much the same person. So <laughs> Sam Bobbitt, we'll set you up. Congratulations, we're <laughs> Sam Bobbitt. We getting tickets to Kings of Leon. Can we please have a fun tour Monday, September twenty third? The man uh, tickets are on sale right now. At it's ten a.m. exactly. They're going on sale right now. You go to WMMR.com for another chance to win tickets. All right, let's do music news. Now, Preston and Steve's music news on ninety three three WMMR. All right, so uh, I'm going to lead with music news information about Collective Soul, who will be performing right next to where we are now later on this afternoon. Collective Soul is celebrating their 30th anniversary with the release of a double album called Here to Eternity, and they just announced it yesterday. Uh, It's due out May 17th. Uh, Frontman Ed Rowland said, as a kid, I determined that rock and roll was my life, and I dreamed of making a double album. Well, here you go. Uh, The band co-produced the 20-song project with Sean Grove at Elvis Presley's estate in Palm Springs, California. They are the only other artist to ever record there. That's pretty amazing. The location is a historical landmark where Elvis and Priscilla spent their honeymoon in 1967. That's pretty amazing. Uh, so Collective Soul is going to hit the road on May 30th with Hootie and the Blowfish and Edwin McCain. That's I, a great lineup. Yeah, that is cool. Uh, when an artist you really enjoy, and I remember years ago when an, a, a double album would come out, it'd be like, oh, yeah. oh, absolutely. So um, I'm hoping Ed will get on with Pierre uh, at some point uh, today. So uh, he's here. The bus is here. Uh, but um, we're getting ready to wrap up, so I don't think we're going to be able to spend any time with him personally. Uh, the event Sevenfold VR Concert, Looking Inside, has been released. 26-minute virtual reality concert raises the standards of one-to-one entertainment and concert experiences. Lead vocalist M. Shadows said, lots of our fans already know the intricacies of our performances, but I think that they're going to be blown away when they can get closer than ever before. Uh, the app is available via Apple and MetaQuest. Godsmack released the official music video of the song Truth, frontman Sully Erna. Directed the clip with uh, Francesca Ludiker. Uh, Ernest said, if anyone knows anything about me, they know that I always write about real-life events that have affected me on an emotional level, good or bad. And unfortunately, this wasn't one of the better ones in my life, but it was about as real as it gets. Uh, the latest album, uh, Lightning, uh, Lighting Up the Sky, is the band's current uh, 
uh, record, and they are touring behind that. And one last mention, uh, our good friend Kyle Mack has got a gig with his band, the FM band, is going to be playing live casino resort on Saturday night, tomorrow night, 9 p.m. at the Center Bar. Go check out FM Band, and we love uh, Live Casino. They do some wonderful stuff. They do. They're so, terrific. Uh, and that is the last item in music news, which means that we have one more break to take. Yes. Coming back in a second, wrapping things up, giving away the Word of the Week prize, turning it over to Pierre, and then we head out to the mountain. Yeah. Woo! And we get the Cardboard Classic underway. We'll be right back on MMR. Stay with us. And 13th. Now, here's Preston and Steve. Oh. Four times before we get this thing under the way. It's crazy. Hardboard classic and President Steve at Montage Mountain. We are in the lodge as we speak at the uh, Slocum Hollow. Uh, bar and restaurant area, which is beautiful, by the way. Yeah, really nice in here. Isn't it? One, yeah, wonderfully nice. decorated and uh, you, huge picture windows to look up onto the mountain. And a nice big bar. A yes. huge bar. Yeah, it's absolutely enormous. And the outside decking is wonderful. There's Tito's Vodka on tap. On tap! On tap! Yep, I can see Jen Fred uh, from Fox 29 as they are set up. Yeah, I can see you, Jen. Hi, darling. I see you out there. She raised her hand up. Uh, she got her ass kicked out on the slope by Kathy Romano. <laughs> Unfortunately, but smoke. I mean, I, listen, I've been on the receiving end of a Kathy Romano ass kicking. Yep. It, it doesn't feel good. I'm sure. Yeah, it feels good. Uh, so before we wrap things up, uh, today has been a lot of fun. This broadcast has been a great time and we can't wait to get out and officially start the whole thing. Pierre Robert has indeed made it and is standing before our very eyes. Hey, man. Good day. Good day, my children. Um, I want to, if anyone's listening, first of all,